And we are back. Couch Company Podcast. I am John, and with me as always, Tyler. Hey, I'm here too. And it's it my is, house. It is your apartment. My old house. My old apartment. Your old apartment. The old stomping grounds. By the time you're hearing this, he's still living in that apartment. Uh, for another two months. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize it was February. That's actually shocking. I thought it was going to be much sooner than that. Uh, we're going to try. So we, technically our lease is up in February, and we're not allowed to vacate before then. I see. In in, in terms so, of the lease. So, so you don't want to put anything on recording. <laughs> <laughs> saying no, uh, we're, we're going to stay here. I feel honestly the cats are the biggest thing, like moving the cats. Getting them adjusted. Yeah. I'm so uh, ironically, we're like, all right, we'll just take the their little cat perch tree thing. Uh I don't know if you notice, it's like two feet shorter. Yeah, it looks a little yeah, shorter. Superman jumped on it and it just snapped. Uh oh. Had that thing for less than a year. Wow. Immediately bought a new one because we want them to get like used to it here and then take it to the new place. It's gonna be a big adjustment for them. What, why do cats have like trees and stuff? I don't. They they, like, they love jump it, man. In, jumping in yeah high places. That uh, we're we're looking at it for the audience. So it's like a normal cat tree, right? Like they don't have uh, front claws, so like the scratching posts kind of don't really matter. Um, why but don't they have yeah, front claws? They got removed. They got removed. Yeah, we 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 have uh, Superman. I think already had them removed, and and Merlin and Morgana had them. Is that a common procedure? Uh, it's common. It's frowned upon. A lot of people don't, don't don't like that. Don't like that. Yeah. But when so we aren't allowed to have cats with like claws, right? Like that's that's yeah. one of the things is like they have to be the clawed uh, at the apartment. Yeah. At least it was five years ago. I wonder, given the the climate of cat decline, if people are. I didn't uh, know that was a big issue. I yeah, didn't even yeah, know it was a thing. I've never had a cat. Uh, regardless, it's like okay. Well, the you know Merlin Morgana were just outside right so it's just like they were you know we oh, brought yeah. them in so yeah. either they could be living outside with claws or living in paradise <laughs> in a cat tree without in they seem fine yeah um they i mean they were like they got they got kind of you know fixed into claw and did it like all that stuff and they were like they shouldn't be doing this but they were like jumping like literally the next day yeah the way that the vet like the vet was very good what was i talking about oh the cat tree broke and i don't know they just they love sleeping in it yeah, that's interesting. There's a cat. I, there's like a hammock. I don't get. I don't get. It. Wow, <laughs> they're spoiled. Chelsea yeah. did not think that they would use the hammock. Yeah, they use the hammock. They use the hammock. Yeah, I'm vindicated exclusively. Yeah, uh, that's Merlin's spot. Okay, so he uses that exclusively. Superman was the top rung, so now he wrecked that thing. You should get like a little phone booth for Superman. Uh, yeah, I, uh, too cliche. That'd be cool. He has a little fortress of solitude. That would Tree be house. cooler. That would be, well, yeah, yeah. it would be more expensive. Yeah, well, so that's part of it is we're going to see, uh, obviously, we have a, a new tree coming, but then ideally in the new place, we actually build like a artful jungle gym type thing along the walls. Dude, cats are so much, man. Yeah. They're so, you just need like a little mat for a dog. <laughs> I mean, cats, <laughs> be happy. technically cats would be the same thing. I just feel bad because we're going from... Every inch of this place is carpeted, yeah. Aside from the bathrooms, right? Uh, and you know they actually carpet bathrooms. Like certain people carpet bathrooms. That's gross. Isn't right? that? Yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah. But isn't that like an older thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah anyway. Not anymore. No, no. They realize people pee on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. Second. This it's is a little gross. Design flaw. Well, uh, your kitchen's not carpeted either. Fair enough. Yeah, the the little bit of the kitchen. But anyway, now our entire place is going to be. That like premium vinyl stuff. Yeah. So I don't know how they're gonna take to that. That's gonna be interesting. You're gonna be sliding all over the place. Yeah, just tearing it up with their claws. <laughs> well, that claws. That claws. Yeah. They still got the rear wheel drive. Yeah. Little car joke for you. <laughs> Do you like that? Yeah, I have a rear rear wheel. wheel I have a rear wheel, wheel drive. Yeah. No, you yeah. don't. Probably Do I not? not. No. I just have front. Yes. Oh. Probably most likely. All right, that's weird. What do you have? A Honda. Yeah. Yeah, you have a front okay. wheel drive. But I don't, if I don't you know get your have. new. Uh, Toyota GR86. Uh, yeah, well, that's rear wheel. You know, I'm spending. So, <laughs> oh yeah, we have house. We'll do we that. actually haven't talked about the house too too much. We keep saying like, "Hey, you got one?" Like, yeah, and then we go off track. Yeah. Speaking of track, so we're we're the the office downstairs. It's like the basement. It's the biggest biggest room of the like, like not living room, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah, it's, it's one of the biggest Space. rooms. 
Uh, so now I have like the office section. We're going to have a dedicated podcasting section, so we'll keep it up the whole time, which is awesome. So I don't have to tear down anything and everything. And all that jazz. Now we just have to work on me not having to commute. And Sound that's treated. Like... Yeah, you can just live there. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we're putting track lighting up, and it's the the light bulbs, because I'm putting hue lights in, Yeah, are 1,200 lumens a piece. And I got six of them. That's a lot of photons. It's so many photons is that eyeballs. actually a photon volume i don't, I don't think know so. no I, I don't know it has to be right what else would brightness i, I might uh, lumens wrong. oh lumens is brightness. lumens is brightness well yeah. lumens is the measurement of brightness correct but that's not actually oh you're talking like the actual light. yeah photons are sure, a thing, like an right? actual light light yeah okay. so uh, it's a lot of yes is, you does are more photons equal brighter <laughs> that's what i would i, assume, I would like right? to i would like to know if if sunlight coming because i do have one window down there yeah it's not a lot it's a basement right so like it's not a lot of light i wonder if daylight like what's the what's the ratio how much daylight how many photons are in daylight versus the lumens oh yeah i don't know <clears throat> we had a lot of applicants for the uh, the research department so one of them maybe that's their their first test do we yeah, right, how, yeah. how many did we get? oh we had like a dozen a dozen least. A baker's dozen baker's dozen that's no, 13 technically it's like a like a child baker's dozen which is 11 Okay. So <laughs> I never heard that expression. Nah, I made it up right now. It's so, pretty good. Yeah, but anyway, so the the hue lights are like freaking three hundred bucks for yeah. that stuff. But oh look yeah, sick. yeah, those yeah. are like those streamer lights, right? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I know it's you like don't smart want to be home lights. I don't uh, want to be associated yeah. with the streamers. But yeah. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that's, that's funny. A, that's a past life. Anyway, well. So it's pouring out here right now. Yeah, it's right? miserable. I had a great segue queued up, but then you went on about your home. I'm sorry. No, I'm just very excited about it. I'm excited for you, dude. Yeah. Mostly because I'll be spending just as much time there as you. <laughs> We're going to have uh, like the whiteboard up. We're going to have the, like, we, there will be a dedicated workspace to do whatever we want to. We've been talking about doing a visual component now that we have yeah. a dedicated space I, so to the podcast. I'm going to have two. Uh, bookshelves, and I don't know if I'm just buying bookcases from like Wayfair or if we're gonna make them custom. But we're gonna have that, and then all of our top fives will have some sort of memorabilia, like, yeah, related to all the different top fives we've done. Yeah, some That's of them what we be, talked about. Yeah, right? some of them will be easy. Yeah, some of them will be v- like, how do you show <laughs> mushrooms? <laughs> well, I was thinking like a pizza box. Yeah, just I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll just, have it doesn't stuff. have to be right on the nose, right? Yeah, it'll be it'll, it'll be, be cool. tasteful. Yeah. yeah. But we, we'd have to get like a, like a small, and uh, yeah, something. I mean, you go to like Blaze or something and get a little nah, pizza box. Blaze, you know, Dave gave Blaze a zero. Yeah, because he's uh, who's this LeBron, LeBron James. Yeah, LeBron uh, likes it. He hates LeBron. I think yeah. LeBron owns either owns it or is part owner. Yeah, invested that makes in sense. it, and um, they got some beef. It's funny because he was like, ah, I'm not biased. I'm professional, and they just throws it on the ground. Dude, the funniest one was when. Uh, it was quarantine, mm-hmm. and he was doing like all these frozen pizzas because obviously he couldn't yeah. go out and do real pizzas. So they came out with their own pizza, and oh really? He did a review on his yeah. They came out with their own frozen pizza, like bar stole <laughs> frozen pizza or one bite pizza or whatever. And he comes out and he's like, "Okay, totally unbiased because I'm a professional." Yeah. And he takes a bite, and he's like, "I'm by a score, ten." <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone freaks out. Yeah. So he does another one. He's like, okay, I'm going to do another round here. Everyone was freaking out. I want to ensure everyone that this is unbiased. And he does the whole thing, takes a bite. He's like, nine, nine. <laughs> unbiased score. <laughs> Frozen pizza scale. It was so funny. And then he did like a third video where he had like a little mustache. And yeah. He's like, this guy told me to try this pizza. Oh, so he's <laughs> like, gave it a 10. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's funny. funny. Nice. That's pretty good. I've never had it. I've tried to find it. I think it's in Walmart or something, but Walmart I really want to try. Good food, man. Walmart's That's great. Kate, Kyle gets all his stuff there, and it's always great. I just saw a video where apparently Shaq mm-hmm. loves Walmart. You know the basketball yeah. player. Yeah, yeah. He spent like yeah, he spent like fifty thousand dollars because like yeah. I guess he bought a new house or something. Yep. And, and they like went- can- they like canceled his card or something, right? His car got declined yeah. <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh man. that's great. Were we talking about that? I don't think so, no. but I know exactly what you're talking that's about. That's crazy. Yeah. I heard just heard that story. I was like, imagine being such a baller, dude, where you just renovate, not renovate, but yeah. you decorate your house in one night. 
<laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to Walmart. There's a there's like a TikTok or a, a YouTube video that I watched that. Yeah, it's a legendary story. Yeah, I mean Shaq's a beast. But um, anyways, it's pouring outside right now, and I had an amazing segue queued up. Okay, because I had a dream last night about driving my car, and it was pouring. Yeah, and I was like doing all these drifts and shit, and it was like crazy. Can you drift with the uh, with real 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 real. Rear, rear wheel drive, rear yeah. Wheel well, wheel yeah, you, it's preferable to drift. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's you can with front, but it's extremely difficult. Drifting is different than just fishtailing uncontrollably. No, not really. Okay. It's controlled fishtailing. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, can you fishtail if you have the rear wheels yeah. going? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's how you that's how you get control because the power comes from the rear. Yeah, and your car swings out. So when it locks up, that's how you can get back on track. Whereas the front wheels have, it's harder to get your traction back because your back end is the is yeah. the part that's moving. Okay. You know what I mean? So I, the energy is coming. I guess from the that rear. makes sense the way you're motioning. I'm not describing it well, but yeah. I promise you, I trust you. The Between only thing the hard- two of us, you would know better. Yeah, there's it's me or the cats. Yes. Unless Chelsea's here. No, she she went drinking with with her buddies. Oh, man, I wish I could go drinking with my buddies. Wow. What? Wow. What do you mean? I love it when people say wow, but like with an Owen Wilson thing. Yeah. It's wow. Dude, Owen yeah. Wilson is an enigma, actually. Yeah. So can we just talk about this? I second? love how... Do, do you talk about... What's your dream? You're just t- fishtailing around? Oh, yeah. So I'm fishtailing around. Yeah. And the, it was funny because like I'm on the roads like 10 minutes ago, and it, I would, did not have that confidence. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got it's you. very, very different. You, it's weird. You're wearing like aviators as you're doing it. In pitch well, my brother was in the spray. passenger seat, and he's like freaking out. He's like, John, you got to slow down. I'm like, fuck that. And I'm like... Never tell me the odds. Fast and furious. Yeah. Like just so crazy. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I was pretty cool dude in real life i'm not that cool which i don't is know man sad. i think you're pretty you're thanks, pretty man. cool the you car- think i'm pretty you're pretty period? pretty and cool oh wow thanks man yeah pretty comma pretty comma cool pretty comma cool yeah that could be a band pretty comma cool yeah yeah or a I, song maybe I, it's more of a yeah. song yeah pretty comma cool well but we'll the comma, add that to the list of, of what we do but the comma the, is not the spelled out it's not spelled out. It's just a comma, but you pronounce it when you... That would be like pretty, our little yeah, thing for the comical. song. Yeah. Like a hundred years from now, they'd be like, did you actually know that it's pronounced pretty comical? Whoever we're famous. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know that, that sick RPG that the couch company made? Well, they also wrote a song. And that was like a... That, that would be cool. That'd be like a secret a song thing. in the, in the RPG game. RPG idea. Yeah. One of the bards makes a game called Pretty Comical. Makes a song called Pretty, yeah. pretty Comical. Yeah. Or we spell it weird and that's his name. Pretty comical. Yeah. Yeah. Like Gabba, Gabagool. Gabagool. Yeah. Have you ever seen that show? No. Oh, damn. It's such a good show. Anyways, what were you saying? What I have was no I saying? idea. We're just trying to get as many topics as possible. Well, I was drifting. Segment. And then I... Oh, Owen Wilson. Yeah. The Enigma. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So like Lightning McQueen. I just mm-hmm. think the more I watch that movie, the more I realize it was just to- so totally poorly cast. I know everyone loves him as Lightning McQueen. But Lightning McQueen's supposed yeah. to be like really cocky. Yeah. And Owen Wilson's just not. Yeah. It's that's why that's nice. why it's so awesome cuz in the movie he is. Lightning McQueen is cocky for like the first movie. That's why the first one's the oh, best one. Well, yeah. Then he becomes like name, a name a Pixar movie that was better in the second round. Aladdin. A, pic, a <laughs> Pixar movie? A Pixar I'd love movie? to see Pixar do Aladdin. What's the difference? Isn't that the same shit? Pixar? Yeah. What are you talking about? No. It's like the same. It's Disney. It's all Disney. I don't think Pixar does get Aladdin. I don't think it's possible. You're probably right. You're probably right. I'm the most biased person in the world for that. <laughs> no, well, no. dude, no. The live action was terrible. Yeah. Pixar movie is better than the second one. Um, fuck. I mean, there's not. it's not going to be better. Incredibles 2 wasn't bad, though. It wasn't good. It was good. It was. Mm. It, it's not as good as the first. Like the yeah, you can't, the bar is That is high. my thesis. <laughs> the bar is too high, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, name name the best sequel of a Disney. They, they movie. don't have a lot of sequels. They have tons of sequels. Name None five. <laughs> Lion King two, Aladdin two. Lion King two. Lion King's not Pixar. Well, yeah, okay. Oh, Toy oh, Story, oh, fine, okay. fine. I'm sorry. Incredibles two, oh, Toy, Story, Toy Story, two, Story two, Cars two, Toy Cars Story three. two is the yeah. closest. Sure. I think it might be. It's my it's favorite. It's not it's better, my favorite. but it's close. It's my favorite. Sure. Two is my favorite. If you even think the Toy Story is okay. I know you 
got fucked up as a child. But for the rest <laughs> of us, Tyler, we like those movies because yeah. they're good. They're not bad. I'm not saying they're bad movies. I'm just saying in the breadth of assortment that is Disney slash Pixar movies, yeah. I don't think Toy Story makes the top... I don't think Toy Story make the top 10. In Pixar movies? In No, in Disney slash Pixar movies. You're out of your fucking mind. That's okay. that is insane. In top ten. Yeah. yeah it t- yes. Right, top well, five. Aladdin, even. Aladdin one, two, three. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Aladdin three wasn't bad, but it's not good. It's top ten. It's not top ten. I, <laughs> I promise told you, you I'm that. biased. I don't know what you want. Uh, it's true. Yeah. You got to be a little more restrained, man. You got to look at things from a neutral lens. I think Beauty and the Beast is better than Toy Story. I think Lion King is better. Um. Okay. Obviously, Aladdin. I, I personally would actually take Aladdin one. I think Aladdin two, might. Uh, well, that's ridiculous. Aladdin, Aladdin two is one, ridiculous. I agree. With Aladdin that. two's not good. Yeah, like, you're right. Aladdin two's actually bad. You're right. Except okay, Iago makes that movie. It, it, sure. It, that that movie is so like predicated on his story arc. It has nothing to do with Aladdin. Like it does, but it's really not. No, it's, I, it's Iago's movie. Right. Which is no, insane. I'm, I'm with you. He saves the movie. Yeah. From being dog shit. Yeah. But it's still bad. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not great. <laughs> it's not good. It's not even good. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm struggling now. I, I think I'd probably put Toy Story 1 on the top 10. It has to be. That's just absurd if Toy yeah. Story is not in the I top 10. I think Monster Disney Inc. is better. I think Incredibles nah. is better. I think Cars is better. Okay, Cars definitely not better. Incredibles, very good. Incredibles is Monster Inc. is very good, too, but I think Toy Story is better. Ah, uh, you're wrong. I mean, it's sure. crazy. I know you hate Finding Nemo. You probably wouldn't even put that in the top 10, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, probably not. I just don't know how I discuss. We always talk about Disney, and I don't know why I, I keep beating Finding my head. Nemo was supposed to be like the second coming of Christ, the way people were talking about it. When I finally watched it, it was like, oh. It's so good, though. Eh. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's not it's a, a bad father movie. It's a father looking for his child. You know that gets me. Yeah, that's yeah. you're that's, a mark for family things. Family, I should care. That's about why family the Fast more. and Furious is probably the greatest franchise of all time. <laughs> Name me a better one. <laughs> you just can't do it. Oh man, you know what? I probably for you probably can't. If okay, here's the thing. All right, this is go. what this is what bugs me. We'll spend two seconds on it and then we'll move on. We <laughs> probably won't. But no, no. You love family so much. Yeah, freaking watch Peaky Blinders. Let's see. That's the thing. That so, is the whole no. The I whole thing understand that I'm going to love this show. You don't understand. I do understand it. Okay. That's why, don't you ever get that? Like something's hyped up so much that it makes you not want to watch it. Yes. Even though you know in the back of your mind that this is going to be amazing. Yeah, that was Firefly. And then I watched Firefly. I'm like, I don't even know why I'm doing this. They canceled it. This is stupid. Yep. And then I still fell in love with it. Firefly... I think it's in the top 30 on IMDb. That's insane. But I might have sure. said that. That might be the fifth time me saying yeah, that on this probably. podcast. Yeah. I don't care. That it still gets me. A couple just it gets me every time. Yeah. Because I don't even know what Fire... I've never even heard of Firefly until I met you. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I don't even know what it's about. Oh, well, that's probably best to go in blind. Completely blind. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, P Blinders. Got to watch that. Yeah, I actually saw... So... Where's that on IMDb? That's got to be up there. No, it's, really, it's the, I t- didn't I tell you something crazy like fucking, um, like mash or something higher than yeah, something, or something. Yeah, hold up. No, I, I, where, I literally did this like ten episodes ago. Yeah, we do this every other. Where I where I tell you, but I have episode. to keep reminding myself. If I'm we like had a man. dedicated research department, it would be just easy. <laughs> I don't know why I'm slurring my words already. Like I haven't started drinking. Because you just handed me. What I thought was a glass of water, actually just, just straight vodka. vodka yeah. yeah, it's very smooth. What the vodka and the and you the think water. so? Yeah, not really. I don't know. Do you like vodka? Uh, yeah, I would say vodka is probably my drink of choice. If I had to had to pick something, isn't it? Isn't it? it isn't it triggers. tequila now? No, I hate tequila. Ah, uh, dude, but the pool tequila, pool tequila. Yeah, no, it's it's. I think everything about that was you needed to have that that uh, the pool yeah. with the tequila. You take the pool away, you oh, know the tequila is ah, garbage. I see. So the yeah. the pool is the catalyst. I think so. Tequila. Yeah. Peaky Blinder seventy six. Oh, that's just. This is what I say every uh, time. Okay, go ahead, Dragon me. Ball Z seventy. <laughs> that's what I say every time, and it gets you every time. Oh, that, that's 
Dragon Ball Z is that better than Peaky Blinders. <laughs> it is. Oh, it feels so bad. Dragon Ball Z defined a generation sure. of kids. Yep. Okay? Yeah. Peaky Blinders did not. Do we want to pour one out for Ash Ketchum? Speaking of defining a generation for kids, he finally won. He's the he's the Pokemon champ. He's he won? World champ. Yeah, he finally won. Is he still 12? Uh, oh, I don't know. How cool would it have been if he actually aged and he's like a he's like an adult now? It would be cool. It, he didn't. And I know. He, yeah. I, Kevin Kevin Cox, friend of the show, did uh, you know between? So I'm on Twitter. We'll talk. Actually, we should talk about Twitter in a second. But uh, he said that if if every episode was like a day or something like that, he, yeah. he would. I think quoted like three years. It took it took Ash three years to <laughs> to get it like a thousand episodes or whatever. That's not bad, right? No, that's fantastic. Champion of the world. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's fantastic. He beat Lance with his his the Pikachu beat a Charizard, which Lance has a Charizard. Yeah. Oh, that's one of the Pokemon's two two Pokemon games ago. The new Pokemon's coming out in like a week. I know who Charizard is. No, I no, I know what I'm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm jumping topics. What I'm saying is, oh, Ash Lance. won the championship by using his Pikachu. He beat a Charizard. Who's the Who is the champion? Lance. Okay, so yeah, so from Lance. two Pokemon's ago, two Pokemon games ago, Lance was Lance the was main in it. guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. So two Pokemon games ago, you had to beat the champion of the world. Yeah, that's crazy. So they peaked. The games peaked. I guess, but now he's going to go into the new region. That's this Pokemon game. That's Scar- yeah, but at, Scarlet but that, and Johansson. But that's the the world, right? Or every region I has a know. champion. I, yeah, I guess. I don't know. It's very confusing. I don't know the. The rules of the universe. Yeah, I just wanted to call him out and say congratulations, but you're making this a whole thing now. <laughs> no, I am. I'm there for Ash. I'm just saying, if I wrote Pokemon, yeah, he which would be infinitely better. No, ten. What do you mean? You, I, I don't know if you could do the slow burn. You, you would have him like fail he would, all the time. He'd win episode sixty. Hmm. That's a perfect length. Sixty. Sixty. Okay. Anyways. He would also grow up. Age, yeah, you want him to. I love up. the I love stories that can tell a story with a character that grows up. Yeah, and it's very hard to do for some reason because obviously you lose some aspects that you know. Ash is a kid. There's mm-hmm. a lot of aspects to that to his character. Yeah, you know that you lose if he was an adult. But if yeah, you but do you gain, it well, think about everything that you gain. I agree. You get the rivalries, you get the romance, you get all kinds of stuff. I understand, and to me. It's like aging with the audience. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. To me, it's like a no-brainer, right? I I think so. I mean, like rather you, than watch Peaky Blinders, you just keep watching <laughs> Pokemon throughout your life. I was going to look where Pokemon was on the list. <laughs> oh, please don't. I can't take it. I don't think it's above Peaky Blinders, but Dragon Ball Z is, and rightfully so, I would say. It's an easy, easily <laughs> a better rightfully show. Rightfully so. How is it not a better Man show? Man who has not watched... Peaky Blinders. Okay, I will watch Peaky Blinders. Yeah, sure you will. And I will compare Dragon Ball Z okay. with Peaky Blinders, All and right. we'll see. The Okay, yeah. Do you do have it. more nostalgia you for Dragon Ball Z or Peaky Blinders? I have no nostalgia for Dragon Ball Z. You have some nostalgia for Dragon I have, Ball Z. I have some memories. That's Isn't nostalgia a, a favorable thing that puts you biased to something regardless of if it's good or not. We can do a definition if you'd like. Yeah, again, research department would be great on this, but we'll, we'll do dude, it ourselves. We have 11 resumes to go Scrappy. through. What do you yeah. think? We just have all day to look at resumes? Yeah. No. We meticulously go through each one. Yeah, Comb through every yeah. single leaf. Every leaf. You know what a leaf is? Yeah. It's a, like a wooden slat that you put in a table to make it longer. It is also mm-hmm. things that grow on trees. But also, trees. Oh, like the tall things outside. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of like your cat that. thing in I here. Don't see that. Yeah. Anyways, it is also a page, but it's two pages because it's front and back. Mm-hmm. Is a leaf. A leaf. Of paper. Leaf of a book. Yeah. You like that? I do. Been watching a lot of Pawn Stars, and I learned that because some guy brought in a page from the Gutenberg <laughs> Bible, <laughs> and it's not a page; it's a leaf. He was corrected yeah. on it. So I was like, oh, fuck. I, I remember that now. I might start the timestamp here. Well, and can I everything just, up to that has been just gobbledygook. Can I just make a quick shout out before? Yeah, I just have sure. one more spice to add into the gobbly, right. gobbledygook. Yeah. Tell me where Pokemon <laughs> is. If anyone ever finds a leaf of the Gutenberg Bible, or is it a or one of? Uh, wait, what do you mean? I guess it's one of. I guess there was more than one. Gutenberg Bible? Yeah. 
or is I don't it know. one? I don't know. Didn't I think there's Gutenberg more than one. Did do the whole printing press? Yeah. Anyway, I assume that's his thing to make more. It was than the first one. book ever printed, right? It's the whole the, yeah, it's the whole thing. Anyways, if you ever find like a page or something, it's worth like sixty k per page. Yeah, per leaf. Per leaf. Yeah. Oh, so it has to be front and back. You can't just have half a page. Yeah, one of the completed ones. I think the last one sold in the seventies mm-hmm. for like two point two mil. Ah, that's like nothing. You mean that's nothing? I bet it's more nowadays. It's more than your net worth. Didn't didn't a Mario Kart cartridge just sell for a couple million? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I either. just I feel like Well, yeah, it was in the seventies, so today it would be worth more, right? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. I just feel like it's bad that a Mario Kart cartridge could sell this or a Charizard cart can sell the same as like a Gutenberg Bible. Well, I, don't, I don't think that's quite true. I think Charizard's only a couple hundred grand or something. Yeah, only. Yeah, only. I think people speaking of Oh, sorry, guys. No, oh. no, no, no. I no, just think I just people's proportion, their idea of like money, yeah. is so warped. Yeah, like oh, it's only like I know you were joking, but like, yeah, people would literally say, oh, it's only a couple hundred thousand. I'm like, dude, that is so much money. It's so much money, but now if you if I watch a game show and it's like, oh, the winner gets a hundred grand, I'm like, okay, exactly. So what? Because our perception is so skewed for some reason. Yeah. Like it's million or bust. Yep. And minimum, it has minimum. to be a million dollars. Right. Yeah. Which is absurd. Who wants to be a millionaire? Uh, yeah. That's yeah. the whole thing. I was watching that the other day. Yeah? Uh, Norm MacDonald was on it. Andrew Carey. Uh, great episode. Okay. It was like the celebrity version. But the, I also watched the, the first guy who ever won. Mm-hmm. Those might be the easiest questions I've ever... I was doing it like along with them. Yeah. And I would have got to like f- half a mil. Would you... You would have kept going? Or would you like cashed out and be like, okay, give me the million? I didn't know the last mil. question, but I would have had... All my lifelines. Like, it was fucking easy. Do you think there's a line, and it's like, hey, we've been doing this for like a year and a half, and oh, no one's got it. Yeah. We're losing viewership. Yeah. We need we need to I would say that up. there might have been two questions that are like, okay, most people probably don't know this. Yeah. And uh, the rest are, I'll send you the episode, man. It yeah. was laughably <laughs> easy. Laughably. They're what, like 20 minutes? Epi- like 20 minutes? Yeah, it was like 20 episode. minutes. Yeah. Well, you can just fast forward through all the stupid talking and yeah the guy was hamming it up it was so i wanted to hear yeah. yeah well i guess they have to do that he did make a little chad move at the end where he uh calls his dad uses the lifeline for the last question and hey i'm gonna get a million dollars yeah, yeah. yeah have you seen that no but that's yeah. a lot of people did that chad chad like move. hey i don't actually need you but i just wanted to tell you i've got a million dollars yeah he was the first guy yeah good for him he, pioneer i wonder if he still has money or if he's just bankrupt he was an accountant. He probably oh, he's money. probably fine. Yeah, yeah. He's, okay. he's okay. Yeah. But um, speaking, yeah. speaking of the Gutenberg battle, yes, Lord of the Rings. I know it well. Uh, it's like two million letters or something. There was a TikTok going around. I don't know how how the books are perfect. Two mi- this is two million letters. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I, uh, the other thing is, I'm not. I assume it's all three books. I don't know if it's one of the first book or not, but it's got to be all three, right? They they took the Lord of the Rings. They took cans of uh, sp- uh, alphabet spaghettios. Yeah, yeah. Dumped those out. Yeah, and and did like an average. So they separated each letter of the alphabet in those cans into like paper towel piles. So twenty six piles of different letters. Yeah. Okay. They took an average, put it into a computer to see how essentially how many cans of spaghettios it would. T- and I forget the number of cans. But it would cost like twelve thousand dollars in spaghettio cans yeah. to write out the Lord of the Rings in uh, alpha alphabet spaghettios. Wow! Yeah, that's just. I thought I mean, that was like cause somebody. I, it was like a comment, and someone's like, "Humans have taken things too far," or something. And well, somebody we, was like, "Hold my beer." You we, know? We, we've run out of things. Right? Yeah, I that's mean, what we, we're doing now. We are bored. Yeah, and we are literally just wasting time till the planet blows up. <laughs> till so, we just die. Yeah. So uh, I, impressive. That yeah. is interesting. Yeah. There was like this video I was watching, or something, and they were talking about like infinite universes, kind of like us. Oh yeah. And someone was like, "Dude, if a monkey was sitting at a keyboard mm-hmm. and had an infinite amount of time, he would type out all of Shakespeare perfectly." Yeah, and, I mean, I well, guess yeah. that makes sense. No, 100%. And yeah. like the other guys were like, that's impossible. There's no way. But infinite. But it's infinite, exactly. Yeah. They just couldn't grasp the concept. Yeah. But it's funny. I was like, yeah, I mean, could you imagine that, though? 
I mean, you could technically infinite. It could be, <clears throat> hey, a baby was born. They put it near a keyboard, and we put a fly around its head. And as the baby's trying to swat at the fly, yeah, it's smacking the keyboard. Yep, yeah. and then it's yeah, typing out Shakespeare perfectly. Well, yeah, I mean, if you have an infinite amount of time. The monkey has typed out Shakespeare, all of Shakespeare. Yeah. Perfectly. Mm-hmm. Done it perfectly backwards. Yep. You know, every variation. Yeah. Or the monkey looks like Shakespeare doing it. Well, the premise was the monkey's just at a computer and just has an infinite amount of time. Yeah. To just. Yeah, just smack around. Smack around. So mm-hmm. it's no, there's no other factors. I know, but I'm saying the more it doesn't like the the whole point. I know there it doesn't is, stop there. It doesn't, no, I know, but as many anything. as many factors as you want to put on it, it like I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why Scary. I brought that up. It was cool oh, yeah, in my yeah. head, but yeah. no, I mean, well, that's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. It's insane. Uh, I wonder what the most like. Okay, here's a here's an idea. Ready for this? Mm-hmm. So we always talk about infinite universes and like these crazy things happening. Yeah. What if there is a a factor or number you could put on the craziness, like on a scale, mm-hmm. right? And I wonder what the craziest event ever to happen on our reality is on that on that factor. In our reality. So, like for something, example... Something yes. has happened. In, a, in an alternate universe, Tyler and John were talking about this crazy thing that could theoretically happen in an alternate universe, but that one happened to be ours. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think that event is? For like our <laughs> dude, that could be something stupid, simple. Like, can that, you imagine somebody has like hair? They wouldn't even know what hair is, maybe. Or can you imagine if humans had hair? <laughs> you know, like just something stupid like <laughs> that. They, they, it's like, can you imagine if they had two eyes? Wouldn't that be wild? Yeah. How can you like? You can't put a a thing on that unless it's like so well, close. I, You're yeah, talking if the universes are very so very close. I don't think you you had a good example because. You know, we know what a cyclops is, right? Or we can fathom that. Yeah. But they might be like, dude, could you imagine if a meteor came down and just wiped out all the dinosaurs on the planet? And there's like a little velociraptor walking around outside. Yeah. You know? Oh, like that if would be all more, the dinosaurs yeah. just were extinct. Right. Yeah. That would be more like what I'm thinking. Could you imagine if another universe, they just destroyed this planet? Through pollution, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Adam and Eve yeah. type thing. Like everyone's just running around naked. Yeah. Can you imagine if somebody actually ate that apple? Wouldn't that be wild? Yeah, they're all in the garden. <laughs> yeah, 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 they're talking about yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I think the chances of that were pretty good. Abel's just talking maybe to that, his brother. Maybe hey, that's. Could you imagine if I hated you so much I murdered you? Yeah, yeah. That I think that's what I'm thinking. What is the lowest probability? Yeah. event that's ever happened on earth i will never know but yeah man that'd be crazy yeah just to know it's probably some stupid thing like like ted was just sitting on his couch and threw a bagel behind him and it landed in the toaster the same time another ted in another continent <laughs> does the exact same well thing okay i got a spice so ted threw it okay yeah and it's in the air and it's yeah. going towards the toaster while yeah. there was an assassination attempt happening across the street, the stray bullet went all the way through, through Ted's the thing, thing through the and through bagel. the bagel. Perfectly. Okay, perfectly. Toasting the bagel Ricocheted off the wall and hit the toasting thing down at the same time as the bagel lands in while it blows up. Yeah. The toaster blows up. Uh-huh. And then... How's Ted doing? He's alive because a wormhole was created to be sliced. <laughs> okay. So we're a little off the rails today. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, I, thought we were in, I thought we were in this universe. There's a universe where that happens. Sure. <laughs> Ted crawls through the wormhole. Who's Ted? What, who are we talking about? I don't know. Some guy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, do you know any Ted's? Yeah. We just played Call of Duty the other night. Really? Yeah. Maybe it was him. Ask him if that ever happened. No. Yeah. All right, now you can timestamp it. Okay. I'm done. Speaking of Call of Duty, <laughs> you finally got it. I apologize to, to anyone who had to stumble through <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Have I talked about it yet, getting Call of Duty? No, that's the thing. Is oh, I, the I had I it think. last time. You, yeah. You picked it up that night, so it's been it's been one week. You've had Call of Duty for a full seven days. It felt longer than that. I don't yeah. know why. Anyways, know. so yeah, I've had Call of Duty... Pretty much mirror what Tyler said last week, if I'm being honest. The progression system is one of the worst, if not the worst, thing I've ever so seen. So you fall in my camp of 100%. what are they doing? 
I, I don't even think anyone has an argument for the other side. Yeah, Nate, about, Nate likes taking it out of the comfort zone. It's ridiculous. Zone. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't play Call of Duty to get out of the Call of Duty is, is your comfort is the comfort zone yeah. video game. It's a warm blanket of all time. Right. The whole marketing structure of Modern Warfare 2, the game literally hey, copied the title. Your kid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember literally. when you were 10 years younger. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean the campaigns following the story beats, things like that, whatever. Yeah. So it's like yeah, anyways, totally terrible idea. And it it's I you probably said something like this, but it's not even like it helps you out. Where yeah. I was looking for a scope for my M4 and I have to play the stupid I don't even know the names of the guns because they're so stupid. But I have to find this one gun and I don't even know what type of gun it is. Yeah. And the way I found it, it was one of the preset classes you <laughs> as that gun. <laughs> That's the way I found it. And it was an SMG. So it's like Yeah, typically you have to click on each class. Or each uh, like type of gun. So like go through, okay, is it an assault rifle? Scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, no. Is it an SMG? Scroll, scroll, scroll. No. And then you just keep going until you find it. Horrible. Yeah. When it in doubt, it's typically a battle rifle and it sucks. Oh, that sounds terrible. Yeah. What it should do is it should say you need to get this to level five. Gives you a link. Mm-hmm. Click on it. There's the gun. Sure. Solved. But, but that means that there's a different UI for PC over console. And we just can't have that, John. It was just fucking ridiculous. So it's it's stupid, and I hate that aspect. Yeah. Other than that, the game, I think it's really fun. Um, the multiplayer is super fun. I uh, finally finished the campaign, so there is that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah well, you already knew what happened, but how, how yeah. did it go? Awesome. Yeah. I, I, mean, knew, I knew the story beats. Did not know how to play it. Yeah, it was really, and I'm sorry, I interrupted you, but I just want like, it's, Was it's everything good. running well now? I know you were having problems. Uh, well... Uh, as of last night, yes. Last night we had zero crashes, and Nvidia finally put out their official new driver that you can get off of the GeForce Experience. So that's yeah. PSA. Yeah. Uh, Harbin tried it, killed his computer. Did not. He just couldn't <laughs> launch the game. Wow. Validated the files once, restarted. Now it seems to work. So yeah. For whatever that's worth. I uh, yeah, I downloaded it last night, and totally worked fine for me. So I never yeah. had any problems with with the game at yeah, all. Yeah, now actually. there's Kyle. Like, Kyle has, a, I think he's running like a 1080 or something and I was like, oh yeah, there's new and he's like, I haven't had a single problem. I'm not touching it. It's like, yeah, why would you? Sure, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Well, it didn't let me launch the game. For, what do you mean? I It said it, I needed to update my drivers. It didn't let me really? launch the game. Yeah, yeah. What? Yep. Guys, so I didn't even That's know it insane. came out. That's how I realized the update came out. That's crazy. Yeah. So, I didn't know they forced that. I don't know, but maybe it was just me because it's been a while since I updated my driver, so maybe it got to the point yeah. where it's like well, it was hey, way look, too as long, long as it works. I guess yeah. it's, it's good. Yeah. So um, multiplayer is super fun. Uh, feels great. Gunplay feels good. I think the guns feel nice. Mm-hmm. Um, the time to kill. It's definitely different, right? It's not. It's not your old COD, but I think it's a great. I think it's a great spot. I, I just think it's it's a really nice spot where it's familiar. Yep. But it's modern. Right, kind of like what we talked about with Halo, mm-hmm. right? I think they struck a really nice balance on Halo Infinite, where it's like, you know, if you go back and play Halo, it is so slow, yeah, and it's just too slow. Like you need sprint, you know, in today's climate, yeah, where we can't focus on anything, yep. right? So it's like, I think it is good balance for the new Call of Duty. Um, it's and, chaos, but like in a good, in a good way, yeah. and it's. To me, it's just eating Battlefield's lunch right now, where like Battlefield actually just, I don't know if it's out yet or if it's this month, where they're like, hey, uh, you can play Battlefield 2042 on Game Pass now. That's that's cool. Right? It's like, oh, oh no. wow. It's like, okay, so you're, Fox. I think it's coinciding with their like third or fourth season or expansion or whatever the heck they're doing nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Well, well I, yeah, so we were actually playing Ground War last night. Yeah. And so fun. I mean, just yep. really brings me back to the Battlefield days. Um, it doesn't feel, and maybe it's just because we didn't have the right kit. I don't feel that the, the vehicles are as good. I think it feels really bad to drive anything but a tank personally. Mm. Um, and maybe I have to mess with the sensitivity on specifically that, but I never felt like I was powerful against something. So in like battlefield, you have your C4s and different things like that. And you're like, I'm one man, I'm going to run up a, a tank, and you, like, hunt tanks out. Yeah. In this one, it's like, I'm just going to keep my distance. Like, why even try to engage? Because it takes more rockets than you have to destroy it. 
So it's like, well, what's the point? Yeah, so <clears throat> I have a I have a ground war class that I've been using, which has like an LMG, which the LMGs are really great in ground war because you just get a bunch of people and just yeah. mow them down. Yeah. And the range is great on them. Like, yep. it's really, really nice. But uh, I have the Javelin as my rocket launcher. And yeah, it takes, I think it takes two to kill. And I don't even know if it kills it. I think it might disable it. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think you're right. Um, I have like thermite on there as well, which seems to do pretty good. But, you know, it's a balance, right? You want tanks to be powerful, obviously, right? Yeah. You want them to, to make an impact. But um, I do agree. Battlefield did a great job of, like, there's kind of this rock, paper, scissor yep. um, effect, which I think you definitely need in, in a game it's, type it's like that. It's weird because, like, Call of Duty promotes the squad mentality, right? Like, if a tank's coming in, yeah. the th- this, if we had all three of us, like me, you, and Kyle, who were playing, <clears throat> uh, focus on a tank, I feel like we would have blown it up no problem yeah. if we all had javelins or whatever. Yeah. So it's weird because Call of Duty focuses a lot on that type of like, hey, if you work together, you can do some damage. You can lock a plate like a, a plant or a place down. But the thing is, if you promote that, then it's like, cool, I would love to see marking or like yeah. if you're yeah. the squad leader, say, okay, hey, we're gonna go to B now or something like that and get points that way. Like similar to Battlefield, like you know, Battlefield does a lot of good things. It's just their last game was broken. <laughs> so <laughs> there, there's that. But uh, Call of Duty, I think, is like r- almost there. They just need to do a little bit more. I swear there was marking at some point and they like took it out because it was like buggy or something. But maybe. I, I mean, maybe there I is, there's the spotter scope. So that's like an equipment you can yeah, use, but that's just that. for people. Yeah. Can't do it for vehicles, which sucks. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the spotting is a huge aspect of Battlefield that is crucial to the formula, I think, Mm -hmm. in that big team kind of battle situation. Um, Because like you said, you can point out objectives you want to go for, and just it just helps just pointing out where things are. Like, you know, Kyle was saying that he was having trouble, like, finding the UAVs and stuff. It'd be nice if we could just point that out and and then shoot them down. But, yeah, Um, I don't know. And what you were talking about with the team dynamic as well, what I liked about Battlefield is they encouraged you, everyone, to have a unique role in the squad, mm-hmm. right? You need a healer, you need a engineer, whatever the case may be. Uh, but in this one, you kind of have to, like, team up and do the same thing. Like you said, you have to all bring rocket launchers to bring yeah. down vehicles, right? So I kind of really like being just bring unique. a rocket launcher, bring a case of ammo, yep. and then you're self-sufficient <laughs> and you're good because there is no healing, right? So, like, it doesn't matter with that. Um, one, one note too is like, I wonder if it's just the size of the, the maps. Mm-hmm. Um, cause like it, they're fairly large, but the nice thing with call of duty is it's like, you're always just in the action. Like no matter where you spawn, um, where I felt like battlefield, especially the latest one, it was like, Hey, let me run for uh, over a full minute to yeah. get somewhere, get shot and get all the way back. And then yeah. I got to run through there. But like, there was never a shortage of, Vehicles, not like vehicles that it's like, okay, hey, I have to, you know, I, I want to grab a tank or something. It's like, hey, I just found this random car and I'm just going to drive it to where I need to get to, uh, just get there faster. So I don't know. I, I think that it's just, it's like you were saying earlier, it's faster paced. It's just more action. It gets you what you want versus Battlefield's a little bit. Wow. Well, again, maybe it's different than last time we played. Battlefield was rough. <laughs> yeah. So something we, um, found out yesterday as well is the maps themselves are just expanded versions of the mm-hmm. regular quote unquote maps that you play, you know, the regular game modes on. So yeah. I thought that was super cool. So like we were playing on the, I forget what the map names are, but like C, the C flag, which is in the middle of the map is just the town that you're used to playing team deathmatch yeah. on. Right. So, um, makes it an interesting dynamic there. I think it's really fun. I don't know if, if, if it was just me, but like I felt, noticeably better more confident things like that where it's like oh i know this section yeah right so it's just like i felt like we were dominating more or less in there or getting our kill streaks whenever we were in like the maps that we were familiar with versus like just running where it was like a sniper fest (laughs) yeah you know so well the problem is like you have to look at the ceilings though at that point because people fall (laughs) from above yeah but yeah, so in terms of like the other game modes, I think there's a couple of interesting new game modes that they added, like the prisoner one and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically, I think those will be very good for competitive. Um, those have a really nice competitive feel. Casually, I know it's not great. Like a lot of our friend group doesn't like 
um, not responding. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a flavor type thing, but, um, I, I think that, yeah, overall really, really solid game. I don't mind. I actually like prisoner, uh, prisoner rescue more than I thought I would. And I like it more than like search because you can get revived. So like if you go down in prisoner rescue, your teammate can run and revive you. Right. So I think there is this aspect of like, they're, they're quick enough that it's not too, too bad. But also, it's Call of Duty, especially for new people coming in, right? So, like, some of us are, like, I think I just hit 55 last night. So, I'm leveled up now. Now it's just like, okay, get X kills with X gun and yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. But for people that aren't there yet, I could see where, okay, hey, I need to get, like, 15 kills with this gun. You maybe get one or two in Prisoner rescue right. if you're not used to the maps or you're trying to learn them or something and that's just not the way to play it right um so i don't know like yeah like there's a balance there i for me i would always i would do some domination do some hard point and then maybe throw in like a prisoner rescue it just seems like it was the the randomizer was like okay we're just gonna put prisoner rescue on for <laughs> you know five matches and like two hours later it's definitely like, oh, promoting its own the new game types yeah. for sure yeah it seems a little biased there yeah domination remains the best uh game mode even after like 15 years or whatever so yeah, yeah. that's just it is what it is so yeah i've been having a lot of fun with it though i need to try out the campaign but um multiplayer super fun i know that open critic gave it like a 76 uh yeah yep Seems a little, I don't know, maybe a little low. I think so. Um, is bad, like, well, it depends on when you catch me. If you catch me during a crash, <laughs> where, yeah, where yeah. like, that would make me feel like 76 is warranted. If the game is working well, then I think the campaign is actually better than the first Modern Warfare. Um, it, it, with the, you know, the reboot or whatever, like the new stuff. Yeah. So I think that's uh, that's a little bit better. I think the uh, the unlocking system is atrocious. I think the unlocking of like skins and tags and different like that's all bad. Like everyone has golden gun. Like it takes like two seconds to do that. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. That should be like the last it's, one. Right? It's weird. Yeah. Well, now it's like golden gun is like the low end, and now it's like you have to get a hundred kills with the golden gun, and then you move to the next. Like yeah, it's whatever. Weird. Um, so I don't know. I think it's fine. I think for, com- for completionists, that's going to suck a little bit, mm. uh, the way that they're doing it. It's not like you can just pick a gun, go all the way with that gun, and then move on to the next one. Technically, you can, but like, it's just a weird way of doing it. Like You're not going to actually have like see the full potential of the gun until you're done with all guns, yep. which is a bizarre way of doing that. Super weird. I mean, towards the latter half of the completionist run though, you're going to have a lot of that stuff unlocked though. So. Yeah. And then, uh, we don't know. So like Warzone comes out next week, uh, hardcore mode comes out next week. We don't know what the prestige is. We don't know what the battle pass is. Uh, or at least I don't, maybe, maybe that information's out there, but if we had a research department, they could, you know, <laughs> I'm actually curious about hardcore. I always dabbled with that in the, you know, classic ones. Yeah. So, it is weird calling them classic. I, I don't know what the point of a hardcore mode is when the time to kill is so short as yeah, it is now. That's going to be the weird part of it, like right? It, I don't, like, it's going to be like, oh, instead of two shots or one bullet, uh, now it <clears> takes <throat> one bullet or whatever. I'm not saying, because we played a ton of hardcore mode. That's typically what we end up going to. I know Kyle likes it because it's you can level up guns insanely fast because it's like, oh, I need 100 kills. Cool. Brr, done. And it's just like, you know it's it's very very easy that way yeah but at the same time it's like i just don't that's not for me it's just like i just want to like, just play the normal domination mode whatever and well yeah i mean i think the normal is better but i am curious about it because you know they've seemed to have been putting flavors on original concepts yeah. and i wonder if this is going to be an extension of that so just some kind of gimmicky stuff for hardcore that was cuz like in the original Maybe. one it's like no hud yeah. And the time to kill is super low. Right. So I think they would probably evolve that. And I don't know what exactly that they would do, but I, I think there might be a chance that it might be interesting to yeah, see. Yeah, I mean, I have, look, I have a hardcore class ready to go. So it, in, yeah. in the off chance. <laughs> yeah, go. I mean, it's a silenced uh, DMR. Like, yeah. Why do you need you silence? There's no minimap. Yeah, it's just the, the sound, right? Like, it's like you still hear it. I think sound plays a very important, like the more and more, especially these games where they retold all the sounds since yeah. the first one. I just I think uh, you hear every little thing. Like Nate, 
um, we were doing like a friend match and he was trying to like uh, assassinate me. And I heard him turn on his dead silence, which is like a little, like you pull out a little, I don't know, a thing. I don't know why you need this for dead silence, but you pull out a little like pad and you hear click and then you're, you run silently. But I heard the click. So I'm like, okay, I know what he's going to do. And uh, he was like chasing me and I'm just like, oh, I don't know you're here. And I turn around and like shoot him real quick. But, <laughs> but it's like, that's how uh, like high fidelity the sound is where like, I feel like every little bit helps personally, but then yeah, to that extent, you could probably hear a silencer. I don't know. No, you're, Maybe you're, crazy. it's a good thought. I think the sound design is always one of the best aspects of Call of Duty, especially now. I think Battlefield had them beat yep. until they retold it for Modern Warfare, Agreed. and then the like guns the new, feel good. Yeah, like the new versions. So yeah, yeah, Call of Duty, fun. We'll have Still, to we'll yeah. have to give it a score maybe after I I do the campaign, and I think the campaign is important, and yeah. I, I'll be interested to. I want to get your feel for the campaign, and then I want to see after the end credits, does that score change at all? Okay. That's all I'm going to say there, right. but yeah. Little Thanos yeah. Uh, post credit scene. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll do that. I think that'll be good. And then, oh, do I have to play the first one too? No. Okay. I, I, well, tell you what. I think it's worth watching that YouTube video of like- How long the, is that? <laughs> Probably two minutes. Two minutes? Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure it's always like the Modern Warfare, like catching up to Modern Warfare in five minutes or whatever. Yeah. And then like, yeah. here's the story. Yeah. It's not a it's not a crazy story, but it's like, here are the different characters. So as they're like jumping around, you can, I see. You can figure right. it out. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, so I've been playing Modern Warfare, but I've also been playing Horizon Forbidden West. Yeah. How's that going? After a very long time of having that <laughs> game, having a PS5 just sitting there. Okay, so the reason for anyone who doesn't know why I haven't been playing my PS5 is because I couldn't play it in 1440p, mm -hmm. which is what my monitor runs at, and it looked terrible, so it just wasn't worth it. The update came out a while ago, and I didn't even realize, because I knew it was in beta for a while, but um, now I can play it. It is beautiful. It looks very good. Yeah. still 60 frames, which kind of sucks. <laughs> but I will say, after you play for it a while, after you play it for a while, you do adjust to it. Yeah. So it's actually not... Not that bad. Have you tried putting a mouse and keyboard on that? No, I, I'm I'm getting used to the controller again. It's coming back. It's like a bike. Does it know? have? Because the controller, the whole point of the PS5 was it had like those like pressure sensitive like triggers and things yeah. like that, yeah. and like the special rumble. Yeah. Does Horizon do any of that? Like, does it feel like you're pulling Some, a bow but back? But it's super gimmicky. I think. Oh, it's okay. Not not anything crazy. I mean, the original, not the original Xbox, but like Xbox 360 had like. A trigger that felt like yeah, that. But I don't think play, it was sensitive. Did you play like, like the the demo that that comes with every PlayStation, where it's like, hey, check out all the different features of this controller. No, no. you should like that. That was actually impressive, but I have yet to. Well, if they, if I can't experience it in the game without knowing it's there, fair. Then you know it's what? Not that's worth a, it, you know, right? Yeah, you're 100. Yeah. That's that's a fair point. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I didn't even know that that kind of stuff. I know okay. the rumble yeah. stuff. They do that sometimes, but it's like it's more annoying. Honestly, well, it's like the the triggers themselves uh like i know in modern warfare that was actually a thing that people disabled because different guns had different trigger throws oh wow. so like awesome. whatever gun you pulled up and that was super cool yeah but then in competitive play oh, it's terrible. like yeah, yeah we're, we're returning this stuff yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely that is interesting yeah i haven't noticed it maybe I'll, I'll focus more on that now i mean yeah it's weighted or whatever right so yeah but that's dynamically so like yeah. if you're pulling a bow back like what yeah. i'm saying is if you're if you're shooting a bow does that feel different than if you're, sh and I don't know the, the new game, but it, does it feel different than if you're shooting like a crossbow or shooting yeah, a gun or shooting, right. you know, whatever? Yeah, so I'll have to hone in on that. Yeah. I almost exclusively use the bow, so that's probably yeah, why that's I didn't notice thing in the uh, 100%. <laughs> it still is. Um, so anyways, Horizon Forbidden West, gorgeous, on yeah. even on PS5, is it looks really great. Um, and there is some things I noticed. So playing the first one on PC you see where they have to cut corners to uh, make it run so well. Okay. So, for example, there's, like, this scene where this guy's cooking something, and the, uh, like, what the ingredients that he's making look terrible. Oh, okay. Just horrible. <laughs> but the faces of the characters look fantastic. Yeah. So I wonder, like, on PC, it probably will just look crisp. Maybe not. Maybe it's just a a rendering thing. Yeah, of I guess like, it depends on how, <clears throat> how much work they want to put into it. Right. Um, so maybe it, it will still look like shit. But, um, yeah, the characters look so good. I know in the first one, uh, you know this, like the, the character is like a, a bright spot in, yeah. in just the look of the game and 
just the environment as well. I mean, it's very similar um, to the first so far. They're, they've added, you know, a couple things. There's a couple e- evolutions, new tools, new, like, um, there's, like, these special powers you can get now. So you get, like, a you fill up a gauge, and um, depending on what tree you're expect into, you get, like, a power or something. So yeah. new things, but largely remaining the same. And, you know, I was a little bit skeptical about jumping into it. And this this is another reason why, you know, I didn't jump into it right away is because it's like, okay, well, I played the first one. I pretty much got it, right? Like, I feel like this yeah. is just an extension of the first one. And then I got into this one. The tutorial was pretty boring. But then after that, I was like, oh, yeah. Like, I started seeing the old characters. I was like, the story is pretty good. Okay, this so you see what good. they're yeah. trying to do with it, yeah. It's, it, it is fun. So it sucked me in. And um, I've I put a good amount of time into that so far. And um it's just been fun, man. It's a really well crafted game. It, it just makes me really appreciate um, that there are studios still making games like this. Just yeah. completely single player, story driven. Uh, you know, like a God of War, right? So yeah. it's very, very similar. To, Which that's to that style out? Yep. Or is that yeah. com- so that's officially out. It's out last uh, this uh, last last week Tuesday, I think. That was the out. embargo. I don't think it was out yet. So Wednesday it then. came out. Yeah, so it came out Wednesday, Wednesday this yeah. week. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So. I have to play that too, so I got to finish Horizon real quick, then jump into God of War. I was going to ask you: Are you going to finish Horizon before doing God of War? Is God of War like for me? I could be in the middle of Horizon the moment God of War came out and be like, "All right, well, no, I him. have to finish Horizon." Okay, I, th- I don't know. I'm weird like that. Where I no, I mean that's probably for the best. Yeah, right? I think so. I don't think it's fair to the game I'm playing if I discard it. It's just God the- of War, you know? Like it that's, is. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. I agree. I, I'm excited for it. So you were mentioning how good the character looks and, and things like that. And I don't, we don't have to dwell too much on it, but are you a fan? Because I assume that everything is uh, in-game, like rendered in-game. So like as you're running around, as you're talking to people, if it's anything like the first one, zooms into the first one, uh, high fidelity, like well well designed, Yeah. but it's still in-game. So there is this uncanny valley, or not? that's not even the right word, but like there is this kind of disconnect of like, this looks good, but it's not nearly as good as like a pre-rendered, like the old days of like pre-rendered mm. CGI yeah. cutscenes. So there were a couple CGI cutscenes in the first one, right? Were and there? Yes, because I played it on PC and they looked like terrible because it was in like 30 frames or whatever. Oh, yeah. You know okay. what I mean? So it wasn't in, or maybe 60, it looked like it was 30. I mean, it was like really choppy. Yeah. Um, and it, it looked okay, but it's, you know, if uh-huh. you have such a frame drop, it's hard to tell. Um, I don't believe there have been any so far. Um, but if there are, it'll probably be in 60, right? I, I believe it'll probably be um, consistent. Yeah. So, Well, the only reason I'm asking is whenever you do the campaign for Call of Duty, yeah, those pre-rendered cutscenes oh, yeah, are I'm sure. in... Like, I think they're the best-looking cutscenes just across the board because no one does it anymore right yeah. like it's easier to put it in well i'm not saying easy it's not easy but i would assume it's easier to like hey we're just gonna act all this out within the the I don't, game i don't itself. know about that because i think they're correct me if i'm wrong it seems like there's always been this stigma within the gaming community of pre-rendered stuff you know what i mean yeah well it's, it just depends that's what i'm asking you is like it's i think it's a subjective thing me, yeah me personally and yeah. this comes back from my days of like warcraft and different things like that I like the idea of I'm playing the game, I'm doing the, the the gamey thing. Yeah. And I'm rewarded with, hey, here is a really well done little cutscene movie thing. Yeah. To then get back to the game. So like I'm fine if the the movie looks just incredible. So like back with Warcraft, it's like a top down, like little chibi yeah, guys yeah. and stuff. Right. But then you have this fully rendered like orc fighting a human or something like that. And it's like, that's sick. No, I'm, Call of I'm, Duty is kind of the same thing. I'm with you, but I think I like it more like that because if you think back to the old RPGs, that's how it went, right? You have right. graphic, terrible graphics, and then yeah. you get that like like a Final Fantasy or something. And Final Fantasy had some of the best like pre rendered stuff, right? Like right. just fantastic, um, and Warcraft and all that Blizzard stuff, right? So, um, but then you yeah, have God of War, which is a zero cut thing, right? So like God of War doesn't have that. So the reason I don't. I, I would prefer it in game now is because it's so close. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's not that huge gap. So like what you were talking about is like you said, like a reward, right? Like it's like this awesome, it's such a chasm of right quality difference that 
um, it's yeah, but, super awesome. But you can move the goalposts. So I agree with you yeah, yeah. that the in-game stuff now is to the quality of like yesteryear's yeah. pre-rendered stuff. Right, right. But then when you look at the Call of Duty stuff where like the faces are so good, the speech is so, the lip sync is so good. Yeah. Like, I, I just, I'm very interested for you to at least play the first couple missions, see that. Okay. And then compare and contrast. So maybe Call of Duty does it better. Yeah. Because the last example I can think of is Final Fantasy uh, Remake, right? Yeah. They they had, did have a couple CGI uh, pre-rendered stuff, and it actually took me out of it. I, you know, like I thought the in-game looked so well. Like the character design in that game is so well done. That actually, the CGI stuff was like, that's not really how they look. Like, I, I don't know. It kind of was jarring to me a little bit. So maybe Call of Duty does it better. It's um, jarring. Well, that's the thing. Is it, I think it is jarring it is regardless jarring. Okay. still. It's yeah, just, I don't know. Then I is think it I, worth it? Is it worth being jarred mm, for a 30-second or 60-second like yeah. awesome-looking clip? Yeah. Like, hey, this is the best visuals ever. If anything, maybe. it makes me excited on like where we're headed because at some point, graphics are going to be so good the, and like that's with like ray tracing and everything, but yeah. if they're going to be so good and the animations going to be so good that what we have in the future is going to be like today's standard. So in my mind, yeah. I'm like, this is a glimpse into the future of what we have coming in, you know, Call of Duty 2042 yeah. or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, hundred yeah. yeah. percent. No, I think that'll be interesting. I think there is a debate on that. That is a that is an interesting point. I'll have to take a look at Call of Duty. I think I I don't like it as much if I'm like basing it off of the Final Fantasy. Uh, experience. I don't sure. know how you felt. Did you enjoy those CG? I don't know if you remember, but I you- did. I think a bar is like, can you do it without pre-rendered stuff, or what are you gaining from that? Again, I'm not mm. saying that Call of Duty should have done that. Okay, I'm just saying the the fidelity that they have was really good. They could have done all of their CGI stuff in engine, and it probably would have given me the same like, oh, that's cool. like that's a cool moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, so with Final Fantasy, it's kind of the same thing where I think Final Fantasy is rendered so well. I don't know. Like, do you need the cutscene? Probably not. But like, I don't know how you would do that in game. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I'm talking well, in circles now. I don't know. I just, mean, yeah, I'll let's take a look. I'll let you know what I think. I think I'm a proponent of in game, but maybe that would change. Maybe Call of Duty does. Yeah, I guess like bit. I would love to see a fully like I would love to see a God of War pre-rendered CGI yeah, yeah. in the fidelity of uh, like Call of Duty, at least in the facial animations and different things like that. Yeah, I, I know. I think it's the best so far. 100%. Um, yeah, but I think people shy away from that because I know like when trailers come out, specifically in, in, in the trailer sphere, if it's pre-rendered, there's a negative connotation to that because people want, I think it's more because people want to see what the game's going to look like. Yeah. So yeah. maybe that is a different argument that I'm kind of saying. Maybe if it's in the game itself, what's already out, people well, are more willing I, I mean, to like look that. to to that effect. If you're looking at the the Warcraft remake, uh, well, not even remake, but like the Reforged or yeah, whatever, yeah, they did the first movie and it looked incredible. They yeah. did a side by side comparison. Yeah, that's the only one they did. So there are a bunch of cutscenes <laughs> in the game. They did that intro one, and they're like, "Oh, well, you know, we never really said we were going to do all of." <laughs> it's like, I, oh, what? Yeah, like, excuse me. They're like, "Oh, yeah," and then like they were showing like uh, clips from like with like different camera angles and stuff of in-game stuff that they never put in the game, and then they they like left it on the website, and people were like, "We th- this is like." straight up lying like you're saying like dynamic angles and it's like you didn't do this this isn't in the game <laughs> anyway i think that's that, what people that get mad tangents. about yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah. like anyway well do you think you think that's the worst uh rema- remake of all time um, maybe up there that, that's tough like if you're if you're touting it is is like a remake or uh, not a remake but like a remaster yeah is it one of the worst remasters then yeah probably because it's crisp, but I don't. I, I don't think it's a factor good. in that, right? Is yeah. expectation, right? I yeah. think that's a big factor when you're talking about a remake. Well, they ch- they changed the mission to make it like fit better, which is fine. They changed the character models, which looked better. But then when you're, f- it's all the other scummy stuff that they did, where it's like, yeah, but you didn't do any of the cutscenes, and you didn't do the camera things, and you didn't do half the stuff you're gonna say, and you're forcing people to download your new client even if they have the old game, <laughs> yeah, and you don't have ladder matches, and you don't. And it's like, holy cow, like they. Botch that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, we'll have to see. Um, Meanwhile, if that ever goes on sale, I'm totally buying uh, it because I need it for my collection. Uh, God, it's so I bad. I'm just giving money. But um, I will say, I won't bring up one final point here. So I was watching Dig- Digital Foundry, mm-hmm. and they were um, – <clears throat> there's one campaign level in – oh, what country is in it? Fuck. Norway or something? For – Call of Duty. Call of Duty, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, I cannot remember, but it's like this. It's like one the one mission where you're kind of just walking around. There's like this bridge and nothing's happening. I guess it's like some downtime. But they did a side by side of the actual town, and yeah. it was unbelievable. Oh, uh, Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That's. I was like, way. I don't know what. Where's that? Can... Where's Amsterdam? Amsterdam. Yeah. Ah, Is that the country? I think so. Ah, I'm so stupid. Uh, I don't anyways, I don't know. Amsterdam. So it's in the red light district. So um, they were doing a side by side, like real footage. Did you see this video? Yeah. The real footage uh, with the in game footage. I think it was console, though. Um, they still don't have the PC stuff out. I don't know if they're going to. I think they were waiting. If I read between the lines, I bet you they were waiting for NVIDIA's driver. Uh, now that that's off there. Because yeah. they added some features and stuff. So they were probably waiting there. Yeah. Good, good call. Um, but this, this is kind of an interesting concept, right? So. We talk about the quality of the visuals, right? Mm -hmm. But there's an aspect to it as well of the accuracy of the visuals. So the proportions in that scene makes it look so much more realistic um, that when you put up the the side-by-side, I mean, the game looks great as well. Sure. But man, that just adds another layer to it for me where everything is so proportionally accurate um, down to the, the... telephone box on the wall or whatever right so it's like it is pretty insane so i think while improving quality is important and i think as we get better hardware that's going to obviously happen i think you know things like that um i forget what they use like the geolocation kind of yeah you know what i mean that that's like another a piece of it i think but it's so different because that that level is designed completely differently than the rest of call of duty because Mm. For something like that, when you're playing, and I forget, there, I'm sure there was a video about this like way, way, way back whenever they were explaining like level design. Yeah. But it's like, oh, yeah, stairs are like twice as long or they're twice as wide or they're like doorways are twice as big because you have to have that. Like, how many double doors are in Call of Duty? Because like people are just barging through stuff and you need room to, to navigate. So in the original, uh, not the original, but like Modern Warfare 1 in 2019 or 2018 or whatever, um, whenever you're doing like the house missions and, and going and doing stuff, it felt very, very cramped because it was like, oh, these are like real proportions. Yeah. Um, and like you're stacking up on people, but like nowhere is that in multiplayer because you can't have that. So right. I think that's cool where you can do both uh, in a game and that's just good game design where they blend it uh, pretty seamlessly. Yeah, right? Because like, this is a, a section where you're, there's no fighting. You're literally just walking yeah. and taking there's it a, in. There's a Burger Town reference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of cool. Um, so I just thought that was fascinating too. It's the same technology like for I mean, a lot of games use, but Forza uses this, right? Mm-hmm. Horizon, um, where they actually take the landscape of Mexico, right? Yeah. And, and recreate some of those aspects, which I just think is fascinating technology. Super cool. Yeah. It's really exciting where the, where the future is going to lead us there. Yeah, I mean when you're when you're pulling in textures and like un, I can't wait to start actually seeing real uh like Unreal 5 based mm, games. Yeah. Like yeah. I think that's going to be a huge unlock for that kind Have of stuff. Have you tried the demo stuff at all? No, I no. haven't. Yeah. I think that'd be interesting just to kind of see I mean the 40 like the 40 series is apparently like leaps and bounds with like ray tracing and all this other stuff. So like I think by the time Unreal 5 comes out I'll be ready for a new graphic I my graphics card will be fine, but I'll yeah. be like, okay, whenever you get like a new game that's Unreal 5, that's like a jaw dropping, this is truly next gen, I'll probably pony up and just get like the whatever the latest card is and, yeah. and drop that in a system. Yeah. Did you see that one video? I think it was in Unreal 5, uh, where it was like a Superman mod. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That looked so. Yeah, they did Superman. They did uh, Spider Man. I think that's all based off of the Matrix thing that they put out. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. it's this, it's the Matrix demo thing, but um, man, like when you go supersonic yep. with Superman, I mean, the potential is there, man. Yeah, there's never been a good Superman game. Yeah, I still don't know if that's enough to make it a good Superman game. But Probably not. Cool. But I mean, there's so many aspects to yeah. Superman to like yep. make that work. But I think we're getting, you know, we're getting there. Like you, I think the moment you put Superman on it, you you screwed up because now everybody knows his strengths and weaknesses, and if you can't hit that, you're done. But 
there's nothing stopping you from making just like generic superhero guy yeah and then do everything you want to do and you just be like oh yeah no he he can get shot so watch out like by lasers or something you know like it's, yeah there's stuff you can do well i think you you can do it artfully where it's the origins of superman he's obviously yeah, maybe. i mean as the, as the comics go he's not as powerful immediately because he's kind of unlocking that he he never really realizes his potential he kind of keeps <laughs> breaking barriers so yeah i think yeah. you can do that right like you start off jumping buildings in a single bound and then yeah. he realizes fuck I can fly like there's a whole big thing with him you he like used to unlock wear, flight that yeah, would be cool he wears like helmets in space cuz he always thought that he you know needed oxygen and then like there's oh, like oh I can oh, hold my breath like yeah. indefinitely no 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 yeah. he can just oh just breathe in he just space. needs sun like yeah. he needs <laughs> he doesn't need anything yeah or it's or that's crazy. that's easy enough is like you know Lex Luthor just turns the sun red and, <laughs> and then it's like oh okay so can, yeah, yeah. No, there's a couple ways to go about it but yeah. man when the technology catches up and you can actually just be the most OP version of Superman just flying through planets yeah and like there are plenty of games <laughs> that try that with like Saints Row and stuff where you're just like yeah, this insane yeah, just person. God mode yeah, yeah. Um, infamous yeah yeah so been been enjoying video games again so that's always that's always good but yeah. speaking of superman yes in the superhero sphere okay let's take a step back and just this hero sphere uh batman, batman. he's not a superhero yeah but he should be i he, guess he might he's be a a, he's a super he's super he's, he's super guy he's the best guy yeah. there is um some some sad news today that uh kevin conroy passed away yeah, you texted me that, and I like that ruined my entire day. Yeah, I felt bad, but no, I mean, hey, like, uh, it, it is what that it is. Sucks. Yeah, no, it was, it was really. I saw that. I saw it as soon. I think it was Watch Mojo on YouTube. So I was on my YouTube, uh, not during work, of course, um, and it was on their feed. It one minute ago. Yeah, Kevin Conroy. So probably. Not the first to see it. I was one I of, was hoping it was fake because like there's so much crap going on with Twitter where like people are making fake accounts and because anyone can get like check marked now for yeah. eight bucks and all that stuff. Yeah. And I was like, oh please let this be just like somebody just made this thing and and it's just gone viral and it's like nah. He's, well, know. Watch Mojo is pretty legitimate and yeah. Um, yeah, I looked into it. it. How did he die? Like they were saying he's been sick for a while. Did they ever say cause of death? I, I didn't find anything. I mean, the dude was 66, but he looked way older than that. I don't yeah. know why. I mean, he just it didn't seem like, I don't know, he aged a lot, I guess. I don't I don't know. That He's such a cool, like, I never saw him uh, or never saw a bad thing about it when it came to things like cons and things like that. Like, yeah. he was just always super into that. Where a lot, I mean, how many people are just like, like we we saw uh who played Chewbacca Peter May uh May not Peter Peter someone who who played Chewbacca I have no idea yeah Peter M uh but like <laughs> he he was just like like miserable the yeah. entire time at Steel City Con and stuff yeah. so it's like yeah well from everything that I read or watched or whatever Kevin Conroy was always like jazzed to like meet fans and talk to people and, yeah you know, I mean kind of he stuff. he didn't have an ego right I mean he was Didn't just all like about the fans and it seems yeah. like voice actors more so than actual actors are more like that. I don't know why. Maybe they're not as famous, but I mean, if you're on top of the voice acting game, you're doing pretty well, right? Like you are yeah. way above the the median for societal standards. Right. And um, voice actors to me, they're always just what I see. And I, I know there's probably a couple exceptions, but they're always great at cons. They're excited when they see like, cosplays of their character or like yeah people just nerding out on on uh or maybe it's just like you know people recognizing them for their voice it's yeah. like oh cool like i i accomplished that like if you can tell that's me from xyz or yeah. just because it's like oh okay you really like this one thing and you never saw me at all but you liked the performance i did like it's a huge compliment but it's nice when people actually like think the fan you know it's yeah. like oh, okay the fans got me to where i am so yeah. that's that's cool let me let me thank them yeah like, i mean i was watching this interview and i forget who the voice actor was but they were talking about you know that connection you get when you're identifying with someone's voice right so in this case you know kevin conroy is pretty much batman right and uh i don't know to me it's like it's more of a personal connection because you know you have an actor play a character right like christian bale yep and great batman but you know you see the fantasy in that right 
You know, you know, you've seen Christian Bale and other things, right? But yeah, when Kevin Conroy speaks as Batman, the image you're seeing, like that's literally Batman, right? Yeah. I don't know. I think there's like an emotional connection there that you get with those iconic voices, right? Yeah, and it's based off of like when when you heard them. This was like I was young. This was my first foray into Batman. This is like okay, like this is his voice. So then later on, like well, obviously we'll we'll get to this in a minute, but like whenever you hear the Arkham games, right? Yeah. And it's just like, I saw the first trailer for it or something, and I'm like, wait a minute, is that Mark Hamill? And it's like, wait a minute, that's what oh, Batman sounds like. And then, then you look it up and you just double check because yeah. it's like, is this just... And then you're, you get that much more excited because it's like, oh, this is going to sound... It might not look like the old cartoons, but it's like, this will be like, quote unquote, like my Batman or my Joker and stuff like that. But yeah. Yeah, I always think it's really interesting. Like, like you said, everyone has their own version yeah. usually it's comic book characters funny enough i'm sure there's like other things too but um like my spider-man is toby mcguire is he the yeah. best spider-man no but that's that's my childhood man sure. like the i played the games i watched the movies i was young when those all came out like but it's, it's crazy who who voiced spider-man in the amazing spider-man who i don't know oh i have no but idea that, but but that's what i'm saying is yeah. like and i i hate to <laughs> throw a shade right after that but like we watched a ton of cartoons yeah, yeah. as kids, right? right? Yeah. And then it got to the point where, and to be fair, I didn't know who Kevin Conroy or Mark Hamill were right. as a kid. I think I knew Mark Hamill just because I was like, wait a minute, that's Luke Skywalker? That's, that's nuts. <laughs> yeah. Um, but th- picking those voices out is, is different than like, oh, I, uh, you know, like I was noticing Mark Hamill and other things and stuff like that. But for all the other cartoons we watched, like Spider-Man, Dragon Ball Z, and that sort of thing, me personally... I couldn't pick out those voice actors if if I tried, but right. there was something about Kevin Conroy that was like, oh no, like no other voice. And th- this actually kind of goes for both, where it's like he didn't just have a good Batman voice; he had a great Bruce Wayne voice, and it was a little, it was just a little bit higher. And I guess that was just his normal talking voice. Yeah. But then when he did Batman, it wasn't like growling or gruff or whatever. It was just freaking deeper yeah and it worked yeah like it was uh anyway it, it's, it's super sad it's not I a great mean, batman voice it's the batman right voice. like yeah. i just think forever no one will ever top that yeah like you don't need to whisper you don't need to growl and stuff and i don't know how you do it i honestly like i know we keep talking about batfleck like, like and get yeah. like ben affleck yeah. in there but like that might have been the closest thing to me being like yeah i could see it yeah where he just turns on like the voice modulator yeah and i'm like that's what I would do. Right? Like, I, <laughs> just talk normal. Like, unlimited money. Why would you destroy your vocal cords <laughs> just to yell at bad guys all night? Christian Bale just gargles marbles yeah. every morning, man, <laughs> and you know, fights crime. Mm. But um, honestly, you know, so everyone has their own character. To me, Kevin Cor- Conroy will always be Batman. I mean, that yeah. is my Batman. Yep. And I know it's not a live action one, but just nothing will ever top it. It's It's iconic. There's just... I don't know. There's just some performances, right, that just elevate beyond anything else, and it is just immortalized, right? Just yeah. legendary, and that's obviously one of the one of the. And ones. you have a lot of people that branch out and do other things and and stuff, but like that, that's his thing, right? Like that yeah. is that is him. He's done other stuff, yeah. But <laughs> well, like, it, it's interesting, right? Because you know you have voice actors that are so talented like jennifer hale right yeah so many things that she's in and um he's just batman i mean there's nothing better you can do but you're just so good and he's that one character done other things like he was in an episode of matlock yeah (laughs) (laughs) didn't know that yeah but but it was just like uh (laughs) my dad loves that show yeah no it was crazy so i saw he was super young yeah but he was on the stand and i didn't know who kevin conroy was and this is whenever i linked the the actors and the face to Batman, uh, but it, it was just a random episode of Matlock, and he was on the stand. I'm like, that sounds like Bruce Wayne. <laughs> and I looked it up, and I was like, yeah, sure enough. Wow, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, anyways, um, in honor of Kevin Conroy, uh, we wanted to dedicate our top five today yeah. to him, and we will be going through specifically his Batman performances, voice performances. Don't think he ever did live action, but just in case. <laughs> uh, he did out there. do live action. Yeah, exactly. Actually, so. You would know. Yeah, he he was in an episode of uh I think so whenever the the T 
CW or DC thing, and they did all the crossovers. So it's yeah. like you have your Flash, your Arrow, your Batwoman, all that stuff. Yeah, I think he was an ep- he was a bad Bruce Wayne. Like he was like an evil Bruce Wayne that like uh. killed people, <laughs> like killed the Joker or whatever. Damn. Uh, in uh, I think it was Batwoman, but you saw him, and that was kind of his cameo. I, it kind of sucks that he was like a bad guy. Yeah. But he comes in, and he was just like he's this broken guy. Is after Bane broke his back, so he's in this like skeletal thing. Yeah. Sounded like Batman. Yeah, like, yeah. It's all good. I was like, I was they like, oh, should have did uh, like the future Batman yeah. uh, where he's like old and, and Terry takes up the mantle. Well, that I, that old. was essentially Oh, it. that's kind of the same. Yeah. Okay. Like, I mean, that was, well, like, he was done. Like, yeah. he was, he was, he hated Batman at that point. But he right? was still good in, in Batman Beyond. Yeah, no, he was still a good guy. This guy, <laughs> he was just, good, yeah, it's like guy. Earth, whatever. Um, there were portals. It was a whole thing. Well, that's always DC, right? Um, I mean, the, the hashtag on Twitter was RIP legend, which I thought was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I was like, okay, so you're not even saying like RIP Batman or anything like that. It was like just straight up like, no, you're a legend. Like, this this is you. Your legacy will go on. Yeah, it's immortalized. It's He is a legend, right? Yeah. I mean, he is literally and always will be Batman. Yep. In my mind. So 100%. No one will ever top it. Um, so I have a list of every Batman performance he ever gave. We're going to run through them, talk about them, and then uh, rank the top five. So Sounds good. You got the list out to, to mark yeah, them down, yes, the maybes and the definites. Um, 1992, we're going to start out with a definite uh, Batman the Animated Series. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah? <laughs> so um, I don't know. I mean, we've talked about this countless times on the show right yep. i mean this is just such a crucial part of your childhood important to mine as well but really more so you i mean this was this was your golden years of of watching yeah. cartoons right 100%. so what, it's on the list right like that's not even like we don't even have a beat around the bush there we'll talk about ranking but like that is like that spawned everything else yeah right so it's like this this was the start of just every other incarnation of all the other things he's done, this was first. Is there a particular memory you have of watching the show um, Yeah, that jumps out to you? Uh, I don't know, something that just stuck with you? Uh, several. Um, good and bad. So they, there were a few that they kind of gave me a little bit of creeps, right? So there was one point when he was fighting uh, Ra's al Ghul. And he was fighting this ninja guy. I want to say he was fighting him near a volcano. That can't be right, but that's just in my <laughs> I mind. It was though. Uh, that, I have to look that mind, up. Yeah, but he was fighting this ninja guy, and this ninja had a special one one move. And he took two fingers, and if he touched your chest with the two fingers, he killed you. <laughs> so peace. So he was fighting Batman. They were doing some sword fighting. <laughs> they were doing some martial arts. And then he uh, he's like trying to touch Batman's chest, and Batman has his things, and it's like this, this zoomed in thing of like his hand shaking, trying to hit his chest. He finally, does it, and Batman's like ah, and then falls down, and I'm like he killed Batman. I'm like freaking out as a kid, but then Batman had some like chest armor thing, of course, <laughs> that he like prepared for or something yeah. like that. Um, so that was one. Whenever Catwoman turned into a cat, that was another one. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, whenever he was fighting uh, the Joker, there are some spinoff movies. I assume on your list, like the spinoff movies are separate. Yes. Okay, so we'll get to the other stuff. But th- those were the two ones where I was yeah. just like, Ugh. well, yeah, isn't it crazy? Like when I think about childhood shows and stuff. Yeah. Like, oh shoot! One other thing too yeah, that yeah. freaked me out to no end was Hardak, where there was there was this like AI that was creating Gothamites, right? So it was like. Hey, I made it's a robot created Bruce Wayne skin like skinned him and everything, and then just started like I don't think you can kill people in Batman, but like capturing people. Yeah. So he took Commissioner Gordon, took Batman, <laughs> took different things. So then Batman was fighting a robot version of himself. Like it was that show too much. Places. Yeah, too much was, for your mind. It was nuts, man. Dude, the writers were so good on yeah, that show. There was like, one like like when this dude like killed Batman. Yeah. Like accidentally. Yeah. Uh, and, and then the Joker, like, mur- well, was going to murder that guy because he's like, I wanted to kill Batman type yeah. of thing. And, like, wow. Christmas with the Clown. Oh, it's so good. There's so many good things. No, it's a, it's a legendary show, and, and the birth of 
him as Batman. So that's his yeah. first time taking up the mantle. And what a yeah. what a start. You can't do better of a start. A than great that, right? ghost. So you saw kind of like where Batman was like getting his inspiration from and different <laughs> things like that. Like you know, it was so a wild really, show. I mean, is yeah. it, I think you can go back and watch it as an adult and enjoy it just hundred percent. Yeah. And not, a lot of that is you know, talk about nostalgia. Like that is nostalgia. It is nostalgia, it's still but good. It's it's written in a way where it's not you know spoon feeding kids you know what i mean it's not silly it's not yeah it's not stupid. pandering and stuff yeah. it's not like here's the lesson we learned today yeah, you know right. yeah it's like a there's some adult themes in there right? yeah. so I don't the know. lesson is always crime does not pay that's, I, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good lesson the, yeah that's the only lesson batman will find you and kick your ass yeah um 93 so the next year mask of the phantasm yes uh which is the movie so same style yeah same same kind of you know, art direction, voice, everything. So this to me was the adult version of the animated series. Mm. So there's blood. Like, yeah. there, like for, I think for the first time where it's like, Oh my gosh, like Batman can believe like it, it was like, it was rough in the show. Did he ever have like the little blood mark coming from his I lips? Don't remember it. Yeah. But this one was like, like the Joker's getting pummeled by him. He yeah. has blood. Like his mask is off. There's you. You you see this range where it's like, oh, Batman actually has a love interest. There was a lot of moments where he's younger. So like you you finally get to see him dealing with like his parents' death, uh, and and younger and how he changes and how like his life experiences. Because you always wonder. It's like, okay, look, I get your parents died. I get that. <laughs> you are very young. I get it. Well, maybe, he was maybe like, I what? Don't. He was like eight, right? Yeah, maybe, maybe I don't. Uh, My parents are still alive, so maybe I don't. But eight, does, eight, you're, you're. If you said if he was two, I would be but with does you. Does that eight. warp you so much? Yes. That, okay, yeah, maybe it does. Got shot in front of him. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. sure. <laughs> I'm warped that much just by walking in on my parents. But, like but what I'm saying is, <laughs> this one you get to see him where he is young Bruce Wayne. He puts on like a ski mask. Yeah. And like fights some guys, does some damage, gets beat. Yeah, like all bloodied up and stuff, and you see him fail, and you see him grow into Batman in this movie, and it's phenomenal. You see his love, you see it lost, you see the Joker come in, you see this kind of like mob boss background mystery thing. You see like, uh, like you see death. Like it, it was like it's people are actually dying. Where in the in the cartoon they they didn't, right. right? Yeah. So it was this thing of just like, to me, it was just very adult. And then the fidelity was much, much better. So in the cartoon show, a lot of the time if the Joker's like in the distance, his eyes are just like little pinholes and stuff. And like people are just like roughly like animating it, right? Yeah, because yeah. they had to get it done. Yep. In this, hit like all the eyes are perfectly animated and it's it's like a perfect like uh there's never some like weird like th- three quarter <laughs> view of a character where it's like the proportions are off. Right. Uh, it's just it's so well done. Had the budget, yeah. yeah. I mean, you see that a lot when it has the full movie budget and scope. Right. Um, a lot of those things get cleaned up. So, I'm assuming you want to put it on the the maybes. Then. I yeah. I would like to put it on the maybes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, um, 95, The Adventures of Batman and Robin, the video game. I not familiar with this game. Are you? Uh, I never played it. No. Okay. So we'll, we'll continue on. 96, we have. Uh, the Adventures of Batman and Robin Activity Center, another video game. Oh, okay. No idea. <laughs> 97, we have the new Batman Adventures, so the, yeah. the new TV show. And I think you like this one less than the original. I, I liked it yeah. less just because the animation was getting closer to Justice League yeah. and, and Superman and things like that. They were consolidating and trying to streamline it and, and br- bridging the gap. It's good. I get that. Um it just felt weird, especially as a kid. I, I have this s- internal thing of like, I really hate change. Right. So then when like the Joker suddenly looks harsher and everything's more angled, mm. it felt less, uh, friendly isn't the right word, but f- it felt less familiar. It felt more stark. Um, I can appreciate it now, but as a kid, it felt less organic and I did not like that. Like yeah. po- everything yeah. was colder. Like it, it just it didn't mm. like poison ivy was sharper in, in a cooler palette and and it just um, it didn't hit for me personally. So I actually have a different perspective on it because this is this is what I'm more familiar with, right? Right. Like I was yeah. born this year, so not that I watched it that year, but <laughs> I, I would be watching that show more than the original. And I'm used, I'm more used to that, you know, blocky, blockier art yeah. style. Uh, right. So that's kind of the one that you know I'm more familiar with. But yeah, I think it's good. I don't think we have to put it on the list because I think it's 
pretty close to the other two. Um, and you obviously prefer those, but more the same, right? I mean, yeah. um, just great. I mean, still the same voice, voice actors and everything like that. And I think this, the, the writing is still fantastic in that, in that show. Um, then we move on to the same year. So Superman, the animated series, um, came out the same year as this. And there's actually a couple crossover episodes yeah. uh, that Batman's in. And I know we won't put this on the list. But those are some of my favorite episodes. It's fantastic. There's yeah, the one where interaction between the two is amazing. Amazing, and there's like one where he steals Lois. Like he goes on a date with Lois Lane, <laughs> just because he fucking can. Yeah. As Bruce Wayne, so <laughs> like he comes into Metropolis as Bruce Wayne on business, takes Lois out on a date, finds out Clark Kent's secret identity, and then just fucking leaves. Yeah. They, they fight. Like they foil a, a Lex Luthor plot, and then he fucking leaves. It's <laughs> fantastic. Like. Just such a Chad. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to call that out. So <laughs> great crossover episodes. Um, so we moved to 98. We have Batman and Mr. Freeze, Sub-Zero, the movie. It's Not, a big one. Yeah. Um, what, do you, what do you have to say about this one? I mean, so same, we, same we realm. So we're judging Batman performances. <clears throat> I think it's a good one. Yep. To me, this is definitely, hey, let's get you some Mr. Freeze backstory. Let me, let's, let's humanize him. Let's do that stuff where like, yeah. I liked Batman's performance in it. I like the fact that it's like, okay, he he he's a bad guy, and he's like, I'm gonna take you in, but I'm gonna not ruin your life in the process. It's a good. It, it to me, it doesn't. It's not the same caliber. It's yeah. not. It's not the first. It's not like you know, like the entire series. And I don't think it has the range that yeah. Mask of the Phantasm does. So I think you know, Mister Freeze steals steals the show in this one, right? Hundred percent. It's yeah. it's all about him, and like th- that's another aspect of these, like. How many things these shows did better than the comics? Mm-hmm. Harley Quinn yeah. came from you know the animated series. Yep, one of the most popular characters now in in DC. I, I mean, just about every every character in there is sympathetic to to a point, and that's. Yeah. I, I mean, I know that that's like the thing, right? It's like, yeah. oh, bad guys are never truly all bad. Like, there's some reasons there, but but in kids shows, not really. I mean, that's a that's yeah, I mean, something that the, the more separates it. Yeah, exactly. Like you can't root. For Feel bad for the bad guy, right? I mean, yeah, because then kids are going to start acting up saying, so for their parents. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's really bad. good. So, all right, we'll move through these here. I know we're we're running short on time. So, Batman Beyond ninety nine. Uh, this is a big show for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved Batman Beyond. You know, you get an old uh, Bruce Wayne, um, which you know you obviously want the original Batman, but I mean, just such a fantastic progression of, of yeah. the uh, universe, right? Uh, where he passes the mantle down and uh, is kind of mentoring this new Batman, right? And um, still just high quality writing, voice acting. I think the art's really great still. Um, how, did, how did you feel about this one? Uh, as a kid, I, I just shunned it. I pretended it didn't <laughs> exist. And, and that's yeah. the God of the truth. Yeah, yeah. Had I known that, and it, again, I didn't know who Kevin Conroy was back then right had i known that it was a continuation of mm. my show i thought it was oh here's a new future this was during like turtles and time i'm making this up but like turtles in time power rangers in the space whatever it is yeah um where it's like oh here's a new a, a rehash of something or here's like a, a next gen version of it yeah had i known it was a continuation and that like oh no <clears throat> batman's in this he's just old and there was that link to like quote unquote my Batman. Yeah. I would have given it a shot and probably loved it. I liked the like whenever the the Joker comes back and stuff like that. Yeah. Um I thought that was really well done. I liked the idea of of like Mark Hamill coming back. Like yep. that's when I got into it and started watching it. I've never watched the whole show of Batman Beyond. So me it's like eh, I can't really speak to it too too much, but I definitely did not give it a fair shake. So the reason I really enjoy this one is because it's such a different perspective um, mm-hmm. on Bruce Wayne. Like he's old, he's not the main character in this one, but he's still Batman, right? So yeah. He's still Bruce Wayne. So I think it's it's an it's a different look at Kevin Conroy, right? Yeah. Of his performance, it's different. Like he's even deeper because <laughs> he's like an old guy <laughs> yeah. now. Um, it's I think it's really good. I think it's worth a maybe. Yeah, sure. I, that's that's my own personal bias. I really enjoyed Batman Beyond. But I was like you at first. I hated it because, like, when it first came out, I was like, um, "Well, not when it first came out. I was fucking two when it first came out." But like when I first saw it, they they would run run these on like Sunday morning, um, and I was like, "I just want like r- regular Batman. I don't want the red Batman." Yeah. But yeah, I put the pieces together. I was like, "Oh, this is like 
the end of the story. It, I, I, I thought it was really cool. to say how many years passed when they when they stopped making the show. Yeah, that I was like, oh, what now? Like, honestly, <laughs> it's whenever the Joker thing came out, and yeah. like, I, I think they made it as like a VHS. Yeah, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so next up is uh, like you were saying, uh, shit, lost to lost my place. Uh, Batman Beyond: Return of the Joker. Yeah. So that's the movie. Yeah. Um, just same same vibes with that, and you already kind of talked about that. So I think really good stuff there. Is that something you would put on in place of Batman no, Beyond? No, I think Batman, Batman, Beyond? Batman Beyond kind of encaptures encapsulates all that sure. kind okay. of stuff. Uh, Two thousand one, we have the Zeta Project. So this is like a failed TV show. I forget what the premise was, but I do remember it. He's barely in that. So okay. Um, we'll move on to <laughs> two thousand one, Batman Gotham City Racer. Never played that. Good for good played. for them getting the voice of <laughs> know, Batman in there. Crazy yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a perfect testament to Kevin Conroy being like, "Oh no, I'll be Batman." Like, sure, yeah. Like, put me put me in. I know, right? That's, that's yeah. Fine. That's Mark cool. Hamill towards to a certain point is like, "I'm only going to come back if you do X, Y, Z." Yeah. Or it seemed like Kevin Conroy was like, "Oh, uh, Batman Racer, yeah, do, do that for it." Well, it's a paycheck too, but <laughs> sure. Uh, no, I I love that. I mean, you knew you know that he loved playing Batman. Yeah, like he, that's, he wouldn't that's do all this shit if he yeah. didn't, yeah. So I love how he just embraces it. Uh, 2001 Batman Vengeance video game. I vaguely remember that one. Um, okay. Was that on a GameCube? No idea. It doesn't tell oh, me. Okay. Well, it just says video game. 2001. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. All right, then we get to 2001 uh, Justice League, uh, which is this, obviously this yeah, is, this is up, my, list for you. Sure. this is my sure, sure, sure. bread and butter here. Um, now, Batman is the best part of this show, uh, bar none, but what I really enjoy about this is instead of just being confined to Gotham, you get to see Batman interact with Superman. You get to see Batman yeah. flirting with Wonder Woman and fighting different villains, right, outside of Gotham. I think it's just incredible because, like, it's so cool because, you know, Batman's just the best, and when you have him, like, Finding dark side and shit. Right. Even how ridiculous it is, you're just like, Batman's the best. Yeah. Like he's just hanging in there with gods and yep. it's just fantastic. And I love every second of it. So Justice League has a special place in my heart. Uh all of those voice actors in that show for those characters are just the ones Cemented, yeah. yeah. The ones I recognize. Like, I mean, there's some other games in here um that I'll talk about that have overlapping with the Justice League voice cast. Right. So I'm just like, it's similar feelings as, well, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. So, um, 2002 Static Shock. Have you ever seen that show? No. Uh, really cool show. So, uh, original superhero, I believe, to the TV show. Um, he had like lightning powers and shit. And it was in the same universe as Batman Beyond. Um, okay. So, really, really cool. I wouldn't put it on because he's barely in it, but um, it is interesting. All right, 2003, Batman Rise of Sin Tzu video mm-hmm. game. Yeah. You know that one? I know it. But okay. Yeah. Not good? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, uh, it's, a video, it's a Batman video game. There, yeah. there were no, well, I would argue there were no good Batman <laughs> video games for quite some time. For quite some time. We'll get to some, though. Uh, Batman Mystery of Batwoman. That's a movie in 2003. Yeah. I, I don't remember that one, I actually. watched it and cannot remember a single thing about it. Is this, so th- this must have been Barbara Gordon, right? And... Her no, suit Bat- was Batwoman was different. Barbara oh, Gordon Batwoman, is, yeah, is it's Batgirl. Batgirl. Yeah. Okay, never mind then, because they had like in that universe they had Barbara Gordon and Batgirl with like the yellow yeah. cape and and, yep. and that design. I liked her, but I don't remember Batwoman. That's interesting. Um, two thousand four Justice League Unlimited. Same thing. I mean, we just leave Justice League on there. I would say, but um, uh-huh. I mean, this is just an expansion of that. The cool thing about this show was. This was the same thing whenever they did like Batman and Robin or like yeah, the new yeah. adventures of Batman and Robin. Right. It's yeah. just an extension. But the cool thing about this one is so in the original Justice League, it was just like the main five members or whatever, like mm-hmm. Green Lantern, Hawk Girl, Wonder Woman, Superman, all that, Martian Manhunter. Um, in this one, there's literally like 50. They expanded out. Just like <laughs> an incredible amount of. Yeah superheroes that they like, got hey, this we, one. We ran out of stories. What if we gave you yeah. a new cast? And this is where uh, Green Arrow is incredible in that show. Yeah, like Green He's, he's like kind of the secondary main character. Like Things like kind of revolve around him. So it's a good one. I think it's worth a watch because I watched it semi-recently. And yeah, like you said, it's nostalgia. But I really do think it, 
even for an adult, it's a good show. There's like some funny jokes in there that are like yeah. adult jokes and uh, just you know like high level themes, right? Like like pretty mature themes. Um, I don't know. 2005, Batman 89, The Complete Robin Storyboard. <laughs> it's a video. Uh, sure. I have no idea. Okay. Uh, 2006, The Batman TV series. Um, I don't remember that one. Batman TV The Batman, season? yeah. Uh, what did he play in it? He must have played Batman, right? So that one, uh, his his ear, his bad ears were all over the place. Yeah. And the Joker, if it's the one I'm thinking of. Okay. The Joker has like... Ins- he almost looks like Medusa with his green hair and stuff. Like it was wild, but I didn't think he voiced Batman. That yeah, I, it's this it doesn't give me a lot of information. Just it's a list of all yeah, of his sure, Batman performances. Sure. So it, even if it's minute, I, it's I in here. I think that's one. And I actually did watch that because I would that'd be around the time that my nephew was was watching it when I was trying to force him to watch the animated series. <laughs> like now, let me just watch this. Yeah, uh, if it's the one I'm thinking of, and it was good. I just it's weird that I didn't notice him being the voice of Batman. Yeah, uh, we'll have so, to look into that. Yeah. Um, okay, 2008, Batman, Gotham Knight. Uh, that's a movie. Yeah, I didn't watch that one. Uh, okay, here we go. So 2009, Batman, Arkham Asylum. Yeah, a video game. fantastic. Um, is there anything else to say about this? I know you've talked a lot about Yeah. when this game came out, the voices were the same as your childhood. Right. And... Yep. Uh, I th- I thought it was it was amazing. The only reason why I wouldn't put it on the list is because there's a sequel that I think is better. One hundred percent. No, yeah. But no, I think I think it was great. I think that it let Batman be a little bit more gritty. So like you you talk about range, you talk about like what what his voice is because like when you hear that voice, you are putting yourself into a specific like okay, this is the, from the cartoon like right. and stuff like this. Right. This took what made that cartoon amazing. And just like Mask of the Phantasm, how I consider that like the adult version of the cartoon. Yeah. This is like the actual adult version. Right, right. <laughs> and, yes. And it was yes. amazing. It was, it was really, really good. Like, and uh, like, oh, b- people can die uh, yep. finally, you know? Yep. And it's like there are actual consequences to everything. To and me, it's like to you me, just it's... see Batman get beat down for a night. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. No, to me, it's Batman fully realized right yeah i mean not this one probably the next one sure. but um where you, you have control now yep yeah and the story's great too in those games you know people I, i'm sure people realize but the stories were fan, like the story is fantastic in that series yeah the arkham asylum um the story was good like it was it was passable it was fine uh, yeah you fell into the trap of like Oh, big weird boss fight with the mutated yeah, Joker yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, but the Joker, it was just like the Joker's just gonna f with you all night. Yeah. And Batman's just like, this is my nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, continue. But yeah, so I, I, it was great. It was fantastic. Yeah, to me, this one, and this is the last thing I'll say about it is, it reminds me of Portal, where this was like kind of the trial yeah. run, and then the second one's like the right. fully realized version. Um, so we have Arkham City Lockdown, which. Uh, oh, wait, wait, I skipped a couple. Hold on. Uh, Arkham Asylum, uh, Superman, Batman, Public Enemies, so that's a movie. Yeah. Uh, 2010, Batman, The Brave and the Bold. Yeah, that's that's weird. I don't. I didn't know he voiced Batman on that. That's like a old, that's a cartoon chibi Yeah, I think one. so. Um, 2010 as well, Superman, Batman, Apocalypse, so another yep. movie. And then interesting one, 2011, DC Universe Online. So, yeah. Um, I actually really like DC I Universe Online. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is one that's near and dear to my heart. Um, and again, they had all the voice actors from Justice League. Yep. Um, Superman was the same, Wonder Woman, and they had Kevin Conroy, which is fantastic. So yep. everyone would Mark pick... Mark Hamill the, was there. Mark Hamill was the Joker, yep. yeah. So everyone would pick their mentor. So you got to pick a mentor if you were a hero or villain. Yeah. If you were a hero, you'd pick Batman because you want to hear... Kevin Conroy give you your mission instructions, and if you're a villain, you pick the Joker to hear <laughs> Mark <laughs> Hamill give you your yeah. mission instructions. So uh, I just thought that was really cool. We don't have to put it on the list, but I do want to shout that out. I mean, we could put it on the maybes. I mean, like we haven't been putting too much on there, but <clears throat> yeah, I don't think it'll make it. But um, it, it's it's really cool. I think they didn't have to do that for an MMO, right? Right. And they went above and beyond and, and did get that I voice think talent for that, it, which is amazing. That would that drastically helped it. Oh yeah, like that that intro movie still holds up. Like it's oh, still yeah. great. We talk about pre rendered stuff, right? Like that's yeah. a fantastic intro. Look up anyone out there. Look up the trailer to DC Universe Online. Yeah, 
one of the best things. It's like you can start seeing like, oh, this looks like yes. old school animation. Yes. But uh, hearing that on loop at GameStop, not the worst thing. Like it, it was okay. Like, and that was just over and over it's and over and over It's just such a again. cool battle too. Like, yeah. It's I, awesome. It was such a cool animation. Yeah. So that was, that helped the game too. Everyone was yeah. like, fuck. It's amazing. Um, all right. 2011, Batman Arkham City. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and put this on. Yeah. <laughs> so just the fully realized version, right? Uh, just better in every way. Yeah. So Arkham City is... Not, not that it's nuanced enough. So the the cool thing with this is you yeah. get to talk to all the different villains, and there there are more interactions than you had in Arkham Asylum. Right. Um. A, definitely more meaningful conversations between Batman and the Joker. So like the Arkham Asylum, he was just screwing around with them. Arkham City. Now it's like the Joker's dying. Batman's like at the end. He's like like uh, the iconic like hey I would have I would have saved you at the end. Like that's the that's the messed up part of all of this. Yeah. And it's this uh, it it was a different level of acting, I think. Um again, the story was amazing uh and the fact that Batman gets to interact with everything. So you interact with uh like Batgirl and well actually I think Arkham Asylum you do as well, but uh Alfred and you know like you you bring everybody in the mix. Yeah. Uh, I think Robin was in that one. I think uh you know obviously Catwoman was in so, so like you see this again with the range, this wide range of here's from his best friends to his worst enemies. Yep. It was so good. Yeah, you just have more of a chance to interact with people. So yeah, like I was I was gonna say it's not that the game's better. I mean that that helps, but it's the performance, right? Yeah. And and like you mentioned beautifully the characters he gets to interact with now, good and bad, yep. uh, the meaning behind it, you know, it's, like you said, it's more. There's more stakes. There, there's it's more mature. I don't know. I mean, you get a little bit of Bruce Wayne in there, yeah. Right? Like even that, yeah. like, And it's not a lot, obviously, but like you still again get to see. Oh, this is what this is what he looks like without the mask on. This is how he talks to you know as Bruce Wayne. I thought it was, it was super cool. Yeah, I mean, to me, the best Batman game ever made. That's that's my opinion. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, after that, we have just some expansions. We have Justice League Doom, which is a movie. I don't know if you watched that one. No, I, new, I, this is past when I started yeah, watching so it's a lot of these. New style. Um, I'm glad they still got Kevin Conroy, but yeah, I'm not, I wasn't as invested. Um, maybe it was in the old universe because I can't keep track of that. I, I don't think it was, though. I think. Justice League universe stuff was right. done at that point, which was what I was in, you know. Um, Arkham City, DC Universe. Okay, 2013. Uh, and I'm just skipping over the DLC, sorry, for, sure. <laughs> for the yeah. audience. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. Uh, 2013, Injustice, Gods Among Us. Yeah. So another great role for him. Uh, this one interesting, obviously, because it's Superman versus Batman. You have an evil Superman now, so a different... Uh, dichotomy between mm -hmm. between the two superman voice of uh from justice league man so i was super excited about that it was interesting to see him evil but batman's incredible in that game yeah. and i know it's not um as story driven as um Ark the arkham games obviously but yeah but i think it, it did a like i would argue it it was, I mean, maybe not as much as like Arkham City, but yeah. like, I think it would have, it has as much, if not more story than Arkham Asylum. Like, honestly. Yeah, no, like, I, I agree. Fantastic. Especially for a fighting game, man. Yeah. Well, that, they Great started story. that, right? Like I, and I would have to, cause they kind of redid uh, Mortal Kombat, but it, that's the whole thing is like, oh, Netherrealm <laughs> yeah. can do a fighting game, but yeah. like really put awesome story into it. Yep. Uh, so I, I don't know. I would, I think that goes on the maybe. Personally. Yeah, no, I think it, it deserves some respect. Fantastic. Did you like game. Injustice one or two more? And I, I start to kind of merge the two together. I so do I the same remember. thing. I really, I would say two. Uh, one is kind of rough to look at these days. Yeah. Um, in terms of the story, I think, yeah, I view it as, as, as one kind of thing. I'll, I'll put two down because I, yeah. I think I'm with you where yeah. I at least remember. I remember the story Liking beats a little more. Lot, yeah. Like Brainiac was in two, right? Yeah. And that, that whole arc. Yeah. And then they kind of team back up again, which was cool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, cool. Yeah. Injustice, great game. More DC online <laughs> DLCs. Uh, Justice League Flashpoint Paradox, which is a movie in 2013. I don't really remember that one. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts no, on that. Huh. Nope. Uh, Tales of Metropolis TV series 2013. 
I'll no, take your word for it. No idea. <laughs> uh, Batman Strange, Strange Days, that's a short in 2014. Uh, Batman Beyond, short in 2014. Uh, Batman Assault on Arkham, which is a movie. That one, um, I th- was it just that? Or is it like a... Uh, I'm trying to think. There was like a collage of different types of Batman mm. shorts, but I think that came out around the same time as Arkham City. So maybe maybe this isn't it. Never yeah, mind. it's 2014. It's a movie. It says. Um, yeah. I. Th- uh, okay. Well, continue. Yeah. 2014. Excuse me. 2014. Alfred, which was a short. Okay. <laughs> oh, he played Alfred in that. There's a little asterisk. Oh, interesting. interesting. Okay. Interesting. Nice. That's that would be. I'd Counts. be curious about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. <clears throat> 2015, Infinite Crisis. Um, this is an interesting one for me because this is how I actually started playing League. So Infinite oh. Crisis was a MOBA back in 2015, and it was set in the DC universe. Mm-hmm. And they got Kevin Conroy to play Batman. And I was like, this looks awesome. I was in a big DC kick. I like DC Online, you know, really, you know, was into, into the DC stuff. So I was like, yeah, I'll give it a try. I never played a MOBA before, but... I get to play as Batman. It's fucking awesome. Whatever, right? Oh, uh, you so, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I've uh, played a mobile before. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. And um, so Batman ruined your life. Batman ruined my life. Um, <laughs> so it was interesting. So I played DC Universe, or no, excuse me. I played in, in Infinite Crisis, which was a DC MOBA, and I fell in love with it. It was super awesome getting to play all the superheroes, and I really liked how MOBAs worked. Um, but the game did not do well and they shut down the sh- servers yeah. s- soon after. Right. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, I really liked MOBAs. That's when I turned to league of legends. So uh-huh. interesting tidbit there. I wouldn't <laughs> necessarily put it on the list. I mean, he doesn't have a, a lot of dialogue in that compared to the other ones, but it is it's cool that they got mentioned. Yeah. They got yeah. like Kevin Conroy for like a MOBA. Like yeah. that's, you didn't have to do that. Well, right? they got him for a racing game too, so I don't know that's how true. hard he was to get. But, but that was good. in the height, awesome that he did it. That was in the height of the Batman series. Yeah, this is like fair. 2015. That's fair. That's so fair. I don't know. Uh, Batman vs. Robin movie. Yeah, I saw you can you can see that at Target occasionally. <laughs> yeah. Um, Justice League Battle for Metropolis. That's a short. And then we have back Batman Arkham Knight. These are all in 2015. The video game. Yeah, Arkham Knight was. Fine. I think they were a little heavy handed on the whole like Batman's psyche and how he's basically the same as the Joker and all this other stuff. And <laughs> yeah. it's like, nah, all right. All right. Um, and that one's interesting because you, you played Arkham Knight, right? Yep. Yeah. So it's it was cool to see him struggle with the Joker internally. Do I think that that came across well in the voice acting? Again, he did a fine job and maybe I'm just putting too much on the story itself. Yeah. I just felt that the performance was better and more believable and more interesting in Arkham City than in Arkham Knight. Yeah, kind of interesting like comparison to the Nolan films where mm-hmm. the second one seems to peak. Yeah. And then the third one's kind of the aftermath of it and it can't quite capture yeah. what made that second one so special. Right. I mean, you see that in like Star Wars too, right? Like Empire Strikes Back yeah. reaches this immaculate high where, you know, similarly, it ends on, like, a, a, a dull note in all three of those examples, right? So maybe that I, contributes. I think the, the thing that saves it is the fact that the Joker isn't clear. Because a lot of the marketing was like, hey, this is the Scarecrow. Yeah. So it was like, okay, like, I'm sure everyone, including myself, in the back of the minds, like, the Joker's got to be in this, right? <laughs> yeah. But then the game starts out where you're literally cremating the Joker. <laughs> so, like, that's the level of dark that the, yeah. the game is going for. Yeah. And it was the same in, in Kevin Conroy didn't voice him in Origins, but it was the same thing where all the marketing and everything that was in, like, GameStop and all the, the collateral was all about, like, oh, it's Black Mask and it's the mob and this is early days and stuff. And then the Joker shows up and it's like, oh, that's actually really sick. Right. So, yeah. It's kind of the same thing where. It's good, but I think it's because more of Mark Hamill and, and that side than necessarily Kevin Conroy. No, I got you. Yeah, 100%. Um, so then we have 2016 Arkham Underworld. It's yeah. A video game. Yeah. I don't remember that I one. I think that was uh, a DS game? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I didn't play it. Uh, 2016 The Killing Joke, which is the movie. That might be my least favorite performance of both Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill, where I felt that they phoned, they both phoned it in 
Um, it wasn't a great hardcore. movie. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't good. In no, my I, I was very like I was equally. Well, that, uh, to be fair, that was also the thing of like Mark Hamill's like, well, if you want me back as the Joker, you have to do this movie, and they did it. Yeah, and I I have never been more excited for a Batman film, nor disappointed <laughs> in a in a Batman film. Yeah. So, it is what it is. Yeah, but so that, that's not me. That's a list. actually out of well, I mean, we didn't know half of these on the on the right. forty plus list, but right. uh, that one I actively dislike. Like, I will never watch that again. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. Uh, then we have Batman Arkham VR. Uh, uh, that one also it, it was fine, but th- that's it's a weird thing where like you are Batman, but they didn't do a really great job of like him being in your head. It was it was bizarre. <laughs> Uh, we have Viewmaster, Batman, Animated VR. Sure. Whatever. Uh, Injustice 2, which we put on the maybes. Mm-hmm. Um, this is 2017 now, so we have Batman and Harley Quinn movie. Yeah, that was okay. Yeah, it was fine. Um, That's weird, because I, I would have expected that to be sooner. Like, yeah. I feel like that came out forever ago. And no, I, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Um, we have Justice League Action, which was... Um, Another Justice League, like cartoon kind of thing. Uh-huh. Not as good as the original. I mean, it, they got like some of the original voice actors, which was cool, but I wasn't a fan of like the art style. It was too modern. <laughs> I just, I love that. <laughs> too modern. Blocky early 2000s art style, sure. man. It's just, uh, I don't know. That's my cup of tea. We got Lego DC Super Villains, the video game. Definitely didn't play that. It's like, that was a good one. I actually yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. 2018. Man. Would you put that on the maybes, though? Me? Mm, tell you what, no. Only because I think now, when I see Lego Batman, I actually don't want Kevin Conroy. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. Which is bizarre, but yeah. No, I'm like, right there I with you. I want Will Arnett as yep. Batman. He does that. a great job yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, Teen Titans Go uh, in 2018. Oh, interesting. An abomination of, of yeah. a show, but... Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I, I guess they had Batman in that. I don't know. It, it must not have been. Does he he voices Batman? Is he must. It, yeah, yeah. This they, is what this list is. Yeah. So yeah. that is Weird. very interesting. Huh. There's actually an episode of that. You never watched Teen Titans, did you? Like the original? Not unless my nephew was watching it. Yeah, randomly. That's, that's definitely past your time. Right in my prime. Uh, fantastic show. But uh, Teen Titans Go is just fucking terrible. I, I'm sorry. I'm talking specifically about Go. Oh, Go is yeah. horrible. The original is great. Yeah. Uh, but there's actually this really cool episode where they do a crossover with the original art style and stuff. Oh, neat. And it was very cool. Yeah. Um, and, the, and Teen Titans Go is just a meme. Like, it's very self-aware. Like, mm-hmm. they always talk about, like, yeah, they, they just want the old show. Like, <laughs> like the characters oh, say right. that. It's uh, like, that's okay, that's, that's cool that you're self-aware. But it's kind of like the uh, uh, Harlequin. Yeah, like yeah. They, they they know what it is, and it's just not as good as, as Harley Quinn, but yeah, it it, it, it is I somewhere know, like the, the latest season of Harley Quinn. Really, I, I, I haven't think, watched. It. I think they peaked at one, and and that's. I only that's watched season one. Yeah. I've only it's watched brilliant. season one. Do they does Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy get together season one, or is that two? So maybe they peaked at two. Uh, might be. I can't remember. Nah. Maybe I watched two seasons because I do remember that. Yeah, and Kite Man. Okay, so two seasons. I think they peaked yeah. season three. It's fine, but yeah, nah, it's, I'm good. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, three more. Uh, Justice League and versus the Fatal Five movie. I don't even know what that is. Sure. Uh, Scooby Doo and Guess Who TV series. That early? Like what? T- 2019. What, 2019. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then the last one on this list, I don't know if he did anything else, but yeah. Batwoman, Batwoman the TV show. Uh, TV series. Is that what you were That's talking about? That's what I about? was talking yeah. about. So he he is in the cartoon in that one, but he plays himself plays as himself. Batman. So his first and only live action yeah. Batman he, uh, is his last role. Interesting. I'm not going to say I wasn't disappointed seeing him that way because it's like, oh, it's Kevin Conroy. I was like freaking out to Chelsea when I saw it. Yeah. Because uh, you heard, like the coolest part about that, and sorry, Superman's like, all right, come on, buddy. He was on my shoulders. <laughs> uh, the coolest part about it was you heard him before you saw him. Yeah. And you heard his voice and you're like, chills. Then you see the poor guy and he's like decrepit. And like they make him look even worse in the show because then he has like like a brace and stuff on. He's just Yeah. And he ends up being like a bad guy. And I'm like, ah, that's kind of disappointing, but his voice is real that, cool. In that's that. the way to do it though, right? You start with the voice and he comes yeah. out of the shadows. Yeah. But then he's like old man, yeah. 
So that, that, that's the list. Um, yeah, let me. Uh, it's it's a shorter list as far as what we have on the on the maybes. So well, we have a, yeah, we have uh, Batman the Animated Series, which is it's on the list. <laughs> yep, we have Mask of the Phantasm, Batman Beyond, Justice League, DC Online, Arkham City, and Justice Two. Okay, so how many is that? Eight. Uh, seven. That is seven. Yeah. So we need to knock out two of them. Interesting, and then rank them. So. Um, Hmm. Let this me ask you this real okay. quick. Yep. Is it weird to have Batman the Animated Series and Mask of the Phantasm on the list? I was going to go to the same place. Is that yeah. kind of, can we consider that one realm? If if we're talking the top five performances. Yeah, then I guess it's separate, right? Well, it is, but I'm saying I personally would like to keep Mask of the Phantasm on more than the entire series. Because I That's think insane. I know, but I think that if you're looking at the the range that he does in that one movie, I think it's phenomenal. Like that, I think like whenever I think of like specifically Batman, yeah, uh, that is the performance I am. Is that where the the, the uh, iconic scene comes from? Is the movie or is that in the show? Which one? The one where it's the lightning and he's I'm the knight or whatever. He does that all the time, dude. Like, well, there's he, the one monologue that line. that's like yeah, no, that would be the show. That's that would be show, the show. Okay. Yeah, that's like the iconic line. Whenever like Scarecrow's getting to him, and like they, that's all over Twitter now, is because like he's like climbing up and he's like beat down and stuff, yeah. and his yeah. dad's like a demon or something. Yeah, yeah. the show wow, is like awesome. Great show. But we're not ranking. My thing is like we're not. If we were talking like best yeah. Batman show show, <laughs> yeah. then sure, I, I would take okay. the made series the entirety of it over Mask of the Phantasm. But I think Mask of the Phantasm could rely on the Joker, could rely on those performances. But to see Batman from very, very young to current day and going through all the different emotions of sadness to love to loss to anger to vengeance to, you know, like all this stuff yeah. within like a 90 minute show is, yeah. is kind of great. Very impressive. That's my argument. For no, there, right? I, I think you're the expert on this. I'm going to defer to you. I think we need to have both on the list then. So you, you I feel don't that think strongly it, with... Well, you can't cut the original series. I'm well, sorry. okay. It's, just so, too, it's his first I know. role as Batman. No, I and know. It's and, just too good. And I, I agree with you, but if we're talking about the performance... But his performance was so good that he cemented himself yeah, as yeah, yeah, Batman. Look, you're, They're hiring him for fucking Batman the racing game, okay? That's how good enough. his first performance was. Fair enough. So, so, okay, but what else... So what can we take off the list? Um, so we have we have Batman Beyond, yeah. Justice League. Yep. So Justice League has to be on the list. It has to be on the list. Okay. In my so opinion. We'll, we'll go ahead and put that on there. Yeah. Um. So we have to get three of these. Yes. yes. So Batman Beyond, DC Online, Arkham City, and Justice Two. I think uh, Arkham City needs to be on the list. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I would take DC off. I mean, because would you take DC off over Injustice then? Yes, because Injustice it's more of a fleshed out role. Like DC Online, he's literally like your mentor. Like kind of talking in your ear which is super is he, cool is he voiced in the in the actual game part itself? yes, yes. Oh, okay that's yeah. cool nice. um so yeah that's what i'm saying like the missions you get it's yeah. kevin conroy coming up in your walkie talkie saying the i Joker. feel like that's got to be not that it's phoned in but i feel like that's got to be less involved than necessarily like injustice where he's like acting yeah of course actor. of course yeah. yeah i'm sure it's not as it but it to me, it was like such a coolness factor. So yeah, it's not the best performance, I would, I guess. But I don't think it was bad. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's yeah. It might not I, be. I would. I'd have to listen to it again. I'd have to one. listen to it again. But yeah, we can get rid of that. I just thought it was really cool, um, and wanted to bring it up. So then, in that regard, we have three on the list. So we have Batman: The Animated Series, Justice League, and Arkham City on the list. Oh, I thought Mask of Phantasm. Well, was I on just want to. I. Yeah. It's about to be in one second here. Right. Are we good taking Injustice Two off over over Batman Beyond? Ooh, ooh, that's tough. Injustice Two versus Batman Beyond. Now that's the tough thing. Batman Beyond is great because it's a different perspective that we've never it's seen. It's a before. different performance. It's a different performance, yeah. and he kills it. It's a great performance. Um, Where in Justice Two, he's a essentially bit. Arkham City yeah. Batman. Yeah, but Arkham City, I think, is just a better range. I like that argument. I'll, let's keep Batman Beyond on. I like that. Okay, because I like having the diversity. So on the list, because I know we're way out of time, uh, we have Batman the Animated Series, 
Mask of the Phantasm, yep. Batman Beyond, Justice League, Arkham City. Are we saying Batman Beyond number five? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd put Batman Beyond five. I'm happy that it made it. I think it's. I think you need to respect that performance, man. It's so cool um, seeing him in a different way. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right, so right. so good too. <laughs> Such a deep voice. <laughs> Here's something crazy. All right, here it comes. What if Batman animated series was four? Was four. Can I put Justice League above Batman the animated series, though? I was trying to do you a solid. Obviously, I'm, for me, look, I wouldn't. I love Justice League more than Batman the animated series. But is his performance better? I think it's comparable. I think it's cool seeing him interact with the other heroes, but. That I think there's something special about the original, right? So, to me, I'd put Justice League four and then Batman the Animated Series three. You think that's better than Arkham, or Arkham is better than uh, I, the Animated Series? I thought Arkham was. Mm, that's tough. I I think Arkham is good because you get to do some things you couldn't in the show, right? Because it it kind of unlocks some of the stuff as far as like range and like mm. you know you can be a little bit more angry you can be a little bit more violent and and like his his sarcasm i thought was better so it's just like tell me where he's at or i'll break the other one he's like what do you mean and then he breaks his arm and stuff <laughs> yeah. it's just like you can't get that <laughs> yeah. in in the the animated series right. so like there was some cheeky stuff but it was still way tamer than arkham so while that is the first one i feel like <clears throat> unleashing Kevin Conroy to do a, like a fuller range. That's why I would, I personally would put Arkham city over Batman animated series. Now I'm sure once I watch him again, I'll be like, Oh, I, I messed up. Right. Because over the course of the entire series, he gets to interact with a lot of characters. I just feel like if I'm remembering correctly, his interactions aren't like there isn't a super wide range in like a 20 minute episode right you know? right yeah no I, I agree um where with like Ar arkham city you feel him wearing down you feel him getting angry or you feel it like you know frustration and and all the like, that kind of rage so uh, with that being said how do you compare arkham to mask of the phantasm so specifically with that while i think arkham city gives you an unlocked version and yep. i like that yeah the beauty of Mask of the Phantasm is you get to see multiple ages yeah. and you get to see other emotions. Where Arkham City, I would argue that while there you you get colors and variations of like frustration and anger and and that sort of thing, there he's still within a specific range. Yeah. Where again, my argument for Mask of the Phantasm is like, hey, let's see Batman as Bruce Wayne early years, how he interacts with Alfred back then to now, how Alfred raises him, how he is evolving, how, you know, uh, I forget what's her name, uh, like his love interest and everything. And, and how, again, how he deals with lost, how he deals with his family, how he deals with like all of these different things. Um, I just think mask of the phantasm. If you're talking about specifically a Batman performance, it is tight and, and arguably perfect. Yeah. No, I, I I can't argue with that. You're, <laughs> I can't say anything. I don't want to feel like I'm bullying you, but that no, that would no. be my that would be my I, interpretation. I came into this knowing that this is really. I look. I love Batman. Yeah, and I love these performances. But this is really your list. <laughs> this is you. So um, couldn't have said it better myself. I am good with Arkham Two and uh, Mask of the Phantasm One, and really only a true Batman fan would have. A, the guts <laughs> to put that one over just automatically putting the original series one. I I'm sure now I'm, with this unfortunate passing, that's making me want to go back and watch them. Yeah. And maybe I'll be like kicking myself here in a little bit, but you got to trust your gut, man. Mask of the phantasm is it's, it's stars Batman. And I understand it's weird because like Batman's in all of them and stuff. And he's always in front of his computer doing these different things. But like, it, it was. It's not the first time it it did it, but it really explores him and his psyche and in this. It's beyond just there's a villain. I have twenty minutes to stop him. Yeah, right. It's like 
I have 90 minutes this time. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it's just like, it is this mystery in him kind of yeah. solving it. And you just, you get, a, a, again, a, just a better range. Um, no, I, I, I like how you, you framed all that. I think it's really well done. So run right, us through our me, list. Yeah, let's yep. just load in here. Uh, so number five is Batman Beyond. Number four is The Justice League. Number three is Batman, the animated series. Number two, Arkham City. And number one, I guess it's called Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Yes. There it is. That's our top five. R.I.P. Legend. Yeah. Um, Rest in peace. Uh, Some sad news today. So we tried to honor him with uh, something we know. I legit Best. teared Just, up when I was trying to explain to Chelsea, like, oh, hey, Kevin Conroy died. And I don't think she knew who you, and I was just like, yeah, this is Batman. And, was, and like, I was like, visibly upset. Well, yeah, I <laughs> mean. I was like, I, I mean, that's, yeah, I don't you know. You said it earlier today when we were texting, um, we'll never hear a new Yeah, like Batman in the back of my mind, it's like, and I guess to some extent, maybe there, maybe we will still in the, in the. Uh, Suicide Squad game like it in the back of my mind there's always like oh I'd love to just hear a little like an easter egg or something yeah. because Rocksteady yeah. is like doing that and then like what's their next one are they gonna do like a Batman 4 yeah and it, yeah like that's when I choked where I'm just like oh like nope Stunning. like yeah like they, they could get somebody and like there are plenty of other good decent Batman voices out there but it's not him and it's like that sucks I even watched the uh, cutscene to Arkham Knight's yeah, and it wasn't him, and I was like, oh, "That's not my bad," <laughs> which sucks because yeah. the guy did great. But yeah, and whoever they—I forget the guy that they got for Origin, which at the time I was the the gamer that was like, "Ah, this, this, yeah, this yeah. is garbage." Yeah, he was like good, and in in some ways, I'm like, I actually really dig this bat. Like he's like super gruff and young, and I'm just like, it, it's all marketing spin because they were working on Arkham Knight during this, right? But I was like. I could I could see the argument that he's like it's just a younger bat, a different story, but I digress. Yeah. That's anyway, that's that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we got. Uh a little heavy at the end there, but um What a great guy. Necessary. So thank you for listening. I know this one went pretty long, but we had a lot to talk about. Yeah. So uh timestamps always in the description and if you got this far, you're, you're past the time. I stamps. know, just for future reference. If you didn't realize, I'm going to make stamps. a timestamp of you talking about timestamps. That's that's, that's inception. The, that's the meta, yeah, yeah. Um, check us out on uh, couchcompany.games. All of our links are there. Uh, give us five stars on Spotify. Uh, check out our YouTube as well. So that's all the links are on couchcompany.games. And check us out at Couchco Games, which is our YouTube yeah. and also our Twitter. We put up polls there. Now. Yep. I think I'm going to put up a. While we're out uh, eating, I'm going to put up a poll. I have a one in mind. So, okay. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. Um, and we'll see you same time, same place next week. Peace.